Draymond, uh, Reed Dragon, just Oreo. Okay. All right. Hello, welcome to the stream. Um, I'm joined by Lolly in the chat as well, who is um here, and I'm basically just going to go through some really basic entry level stuff about how to play Wargamer Dragon. Um, and a key part of Red Dragon uh, is basically building a deck. I've been told uh, my accent makes it sound like dick. Um, so, building a deck in Red Dragon. Um, uh, and basically, that's like how you build an army. Um, so, we'll start with that, basically. Um, so, when you boot up Red Dragon, uh, you'll have basically a couple of... Um, sort of starting decks such as like the soviet battle group red four starting deck um uh the blue four starting deck and the blue four naval deck etc etc um how these basically look on the map oh, on the screen here it's like the deck manager the deck manager um and effectively it says on the left here uh what faction they are so these these are all blue four decks so like the nato um versus red four decks which are like uh communist bloc so like russia uh north korea um you go i think yugoslavia stuff like that um then in the middle you've got obviously the name once you start making your own decks you can make uh your own names for things like uh, oscar mike is my like mechanized us deck um and then on the middle you've got the nation if a nation's applicable um something cool about red dragon is you don't have to narrow it down to a particular nation you could just play red four uh so you'd have access to all russian or north korean or etc cetera, etc cetera units in one big deck so I'm, so I'm guessing in a sense sort of like create your own faction sort of deal yeah a little bit yeah and um the more specialized you go typically the more benefits you get which i'll go over in a second as well so then then you see here with this uh uh my australia new zealand all chair deck um i've gone blue four i've named it i've narrowed it down to anzac and you'll see here if you hover over it since i've selected anzac you get plus 15 activation points which um i'll basically explain as uh like slots to purchase new unit types and then you also get 30 percent availability increased uh for units of type logistics recon tank infantry support vehicle helo and planes um so that's the benefits but then you are uh, locked to anzac units so i can't have abrams basically there's no abrams in the anzac deck um so i can't have abrams tanks uh i can't have longbow helicopters like those are u.s specific units so unfortunately it means you lose some things but you gain other benefits uh then i've, gotcha. speci then I've specialized further i've gone to motorized which again gives you higher xp so like more elite recon vehicle and infantry units um and also uh it costs less to put them in your deck um and then you get plus two slots available for recon vehicle and infantry but then again you're locked into those types of units so like this deck is basically it goes hard on the lavs i'll show you so this is that deck there and this is basically all the units and this might look daunting because <laughs> there's a lot of shit going on here and this is kind of the beauty of red dragon there's a lot of um unit variety and there's a lot of um there's a lot of nuance to how you build your deck and you can play with the blue four starter deck and it's really good like it's adequate um and that's actually how i'd recommend most new players start is just try out the kind of generic deck um to get a feel for what you enjoy in the game and then you can specialize to what you like so gotcha. top to bottom i'll just give a bit of an explanation of each category um and then i'll go over like how the what the screen's basically showing so top logistics this is basically your uh things like your bases um your like transport trucks um in wargame red dragon units can actually run out of ammunition and fuel and need to be repaired as well uh so you actually need to supply your troops at the front um if you've got a bunch of guys with like uh tow missiles for example and they've been firing at tanks all day they're gonna need more ammo like they'll run out pretty quick so you need to get like a transport truck to them uh they come in many different flavors there's i've got two kinds of transport truck here uh the unimog cargo and the uh man caddy six by six at the top there um you know what i'm just gonna turn on my show cursor that's probably gonna be useful uh, how do i do that i mean i can see them highlight but yeah 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 idea. just uh just in case uh, let's see if this works 
so for the bit earlier about the whole go. specialization and all that, I'm gathering that uh, like basically choose uh, versatility over um, uh, fucking specializing and vice yeah, versa yeah. and shit. You might see a little I'm gathering. You might see on this deck a lot of my vehicle units are the little chevrons. The little chevrons are like how trained they are. And most of this deck is like quite elite. Like they're all pretty sh like high level ranks. Um, reason being as I specialize into motorized, so it's like they're really good at being motorized. Um, but, okay. but in return, I have way less tanks and like helicopters and jets than you might have in like another deck. Uh, not a lot of armor, you know. Um, that being said, you don't need a lot. You know, if you if you use it effectively, you don't need too much. Uh, so back, back to logistics though. Um, so you got the fob up the top. I've got the Unimog cargo and the man caddies. Um, then I've got then you need commanders. These are marked with this little star icon. Um, these are basically so this one here. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a squad of guys. Hence the picture of a guy. Uh, but it's in an Aslev. So like if you hover over it, you see it's guys, but it's in an Aslev. Mm -hmm. So basically, they every unit in this game comes with transports. If they're infantry so like these units here on the infantry row they're like in helicopters or in hueys or in uh like a apc or like a, it's more like a truck but yeah um so commanders are basically how you capture regions on the map um and that gives you effectively like income to buy more units um and also can be part of the objectives for the mission so like if you're just playing destruction where the goal is just to kill enemy units um, it'll basically increase your income flow, uh, which means you can buy more units. And if you're outnumbering them and outmatching them, you'll probably win pretty quick. Uh, so you need commanders. You absolutely need commanders. Um, that being said, they're really expensive. We'll get to it shortly, but the orange number um, at the top right corner of each unit card is the cost. And as you can see, like the transport trucks are 10, where my commander in a truck is 110. 100 for the commander, 10 for the trucks. Uh, or 140 for these command uh, as lives. Gotcha. So that's the logistics tab. Think of logistics as basically like commanding and supply. And that's about it, really. Um, infantry is pretty much as the name suggests. It's just guys. Um, various different flavors, though. So left to right, uh, a red background. It means they're like elite troops um so these are like australian sas and chinooks um they're like my elite boys uh very good in close combat in cities um pretty stealthy good good stats all around basically good weapons they normally carry like uh assault rifles or smgs an lmg and like anti-tank rockets um or grenade launchers uh you don't get many of them though um so you want to try and be careful with them then i've got this this unit which by that icon uh that picture of the detonating airburst um these are anti-air so these guys are basically like uh stinger teams um they come in helicopters so i insert them by helicopter and then like normally set them up so they can shoot down enemy air uh the milan is like anti-tank rockets um kind of like tow missiles but it's the milan i think it's a french weapon to system um they're small they're very good for anti-tank uh commandos 90 so these are the 1990 Australian Commandos. Um, I have them coming in the Hueys. And then I've got another set of them to get more in my deck. So basically I've got um, the green number here is how many squads you have available. Once your squads have run out, they've run out forever. Like you have to basically manage how many squads you have in your army. Uh, so I have 20 Commandos 90 total. 10 there and 10 there. Uh, then I've like got yeah uh when you lose them is it like forever forever or just during that match oh uh, during that match yeah think, think of it okay. as a bit like age of empires where like you ba you're basically playing skirmish um okay but you have this many for that skirmish and games can range anywhere from like 20 minutes 10 minutes for something really short to like four hours like i've, I've played some pretty long games depending on the settings um, but you don't have to do that. You can just play. You know, we normally play. Me and my friends, we normally play like up to two hours at most. Um, that's kind of the sweet spot for us. Maybe less, like an hour. Um, Diggers 90. Again, I've got 21 squads of them. They're pretty elite. Uh, they're very similar to Commandos 90, just slightly different. Uh, a little cheaper. 
um, and they come in a uh, like a stoli, which is kind of like an amphibious truck, I think. Uh, and then finally, we've got the Emeraw, which is basically like a, I think it's like a recoilless rifle. Uh, so again, kind of anti-tank, anti-armor. A um, little bit shorter range than the Milans, though, but a little bit, sh uh, they normally carry a bit more ammo. Um, and they're coming in helos as well. So that's that's my infantry tab. It's basically just like elites, uh, specialist anti-vehicle squads, and then generic infantry. And as gotcha. you can as you can see, I have eighty eight squads in infantry. It's 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 almost my biggest section apart from vehicles. Uh, next next on the deck is support. Now support is uh basically where you find all your artillery, self propelled artillery, um, and like anti air vehicles. Um, so like anti air missiles and anti air like spag guns. So like the Tunguska, for example, is a real fucking asshole. Um, and that can be found in the support section. Um, here in this deck, I've got trait rapiers, um, a radar version, and then a non-radar version. Um, these are basically, uh, missile AA. So these are what I use to fight, uh, like jets, basically. Jets specifically, they can also swap down helicopters, but I have better stuff for that. Um, yeah. these are basically my anti-air net, these three here. Uh, then to the right of that, I've got M108, uh, artillery pieces. Um, so these are like a long range heavy howitzer, I guess you call it, or self-propelled gun. Um, I only have five of them because you don't need much artillery, unless you're building like a support artillery deck. Um, playing co-op with friends is really fun because you can basically complement each other. Like I've got a commonwealth deck that's basically just a bunch of supply to keep my friends supplied. Um, where the deck itself is not very good in combat, I basically just complement their decks. So that's something that's quite cool about Red Dragon, is if you play with friends, you can really, like, build up a team. Okay. Uh, then I've got the M125A1. Uh, this is more like a mortar APC. Uh, so this is like my short-range infantry support artillery. They're quite cheap. Um, cheap and cheerful, very effective against like, enemy towns, stuff like that. Uh, they, they basically push up with my infantry and give them a bit of uh, fire support. But they're very short-range, so you have to keep them at the front line. Uh, tanks. Tanks are pretty self-explanatory. They're basically your heavy armor. Um, left to right, I basically just have two variants of leopards. Uh, a slightly more modern, more expensive leopard, and a slightly older, less expensive leopard. Uh, two sets of those each. So I've got 13 there, 13 there, 16 there, 16 there. Um, tanks, if you're using them effectively, you don't need many. Uh, that being said, you could also get lots of light cheap tanks and just rush um there's a lot of play styles available i personally like to go for super elite low low count armies uh where my guys are like as best as they can be but the problem with this deck is it's not it's not an armored deck these are very old style tanks and not not super good um gotcha. as you'll see from the costs cost cost can normally give you a pretty good indication of how powerful a unit is um these are like 55 for example of like abrams they're like 140 in cost Whew. so they're like almost triple in cost um because they're just a lot more effective uh i think the, the 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 guides online normally refer to them as like super heavy tanks these are more like a medium tank in terms of like how the game works gotcha um then there's also the light tanks which are like a lot faster like the scorpion and the british deck for example um now recon recon is so key this is something that a lot of new players um neglect and it's where they fall down probably or don't enjoy the game um there's like a really cool fog of war system in wargame red dragon i like it a lot but it basically means you always have to have eyes on enemies or they'll fade into the fucking map and you'll never see them again um what that means is basically if you have recon units in a particular area looking onto an area you'll see enemies uh and so you can engage enemies um left to right uh as you'll see there's aslevs in the command area so i've got an aslev commander there but i also have aslevs down here so there's a lot of like vehicle overlap uh it's kind of like you know humvees like you can have humvees that are like anti-air humvees you can have infantry transport humvees it's like uh it's like that you know so these are the recon specific like the scout aslevs um, um yeah are the recon units themselves kind of like uh stealthy and shit yeah they're normally they're normally a little stealthier um they're normally uh they're normally a little stealthier they're normally they have they have what's called a, a stat called optics 
Uh, and normally their optics is a lot higher than the optics of other units. Um, which means they can, they've got a way bigger sight radius. But you basically want to park them up in like a forest or something and like kind of not let them get killed. They're basically just watching the enemy while your other units engage. That being gotcha. said, in a pinch they can fight. Um, so like these Azlavs still have Bushmaster. Um, and the NZSAS are still a very capable fighting force. They're just also recon. Okay. You don't want to throw them away. You know, you want to use them as in their job role. Um, yeah. So left to right, I've got a helicopter recon. Very useful, but very easy to get shot down. Um, Azlavs, which are like my little, you know, LAVs. I've got NZSAS coming in Azlavs or coming in Chinooks. Um, then I have no uh, North Force, which is like I think Australian recon. Um, and again, I've got them coming in Chinooks or uh, Air One Threes. So there's like um, the reason you want to diversify your transport types is like if you need to get to like the top right corner of the map quick, you want helicopters. But if you want something cheap and cheerful, and you want quantity, you want to go with like land transports. Gotcha. Uh, then you got your vehicles. Um, vehicles are like everything that's on wheels or tracks that isn't tanks. Um, so mine, mine is basically just a bunch of Azlavs, like LAVs, uh, LAVs with tow missiles, an LAV with a big fuck off gun, um, really light little Jeeps or like armored cars called Fair Intex. They're hilarious, but they're so shit. Um, I just love them because there's, I've got 42 of them. So I just basically buy all 42 and throw them in the enemy. <laughs> For a laugh. Oh god. Um, these are not effective. I, I just love them. <laughs> uh, and then the Rover Milan, which is basically a shoot and scoot Jeep. Uh, so it's got a Milan anti tank missile, but it's a tiny shitty Jeep. So if it gets caught in combat, it will die. It's more designed to hide in some trees, fire at a tank, run away. Um, so they're quite useful if you want to basically like play defensively. Like if they're sending a big column of T fifty fives or something at you. You have a bunch of these in the trees. You just fire a bunch of missiles, blow up their first rank of tanks, and then fuck off. It's quite amusing. Hmm. Uh, helicopters, again, pretty self-explanatory. This is just helicopters. <coughs> um, they vary pretty dramatically in other decks. In the Anzac deck, they're really basic. It's just bush rangers, which are just a Huey with uh, miniguns. Hmm. So they're very gotcha. uh, on missiles, I think, or rockets. Um, helicopters can range from these to like really extreme, like the Longbow. Or the Apaches, where they've got, like, tow missiles, anti-air, uh, grenade launchers, auto cannons, Like, you know, pretty effective close air support. Uh, helicopters yeah. are a bit like cavalry uh, cavalry archers in Total War games. Um, they're really micro-heavy. Like, you basically want to be, like, micromanaging them versus, like, setting them up on attack move or anything. Um, gotcha. But if you use them effectively, they're absolutely devastating. I normally use mine as a tank reaction force. Like, if I see a big pile of tanks, I send up my Apaches and um, go after them. In this deck, uh, they're more designed for anti-infantry killing. They're just they're my quick reaction force to a bunch of infantry turning up where I don't want them. Okay. Uh, helicopters need to be frequently resupplied, so you not quite often have to send them back to the FOB. Um, so they're kind of, like, that's why I say they're micro-heavy. You want And you want to land them so the jets don't just knock them out of the sky or anti-air. So you quite often want to, uh, like, land them in the fields or something near your base uh, to fill up on rockets and shit, and then send them out when you need them. At least that's how I play. Again, there's a lot of play styles, so you kind of find your own niche, but um, that's how I play, at least. Okay. Uh, then I've got planes. Now, planes, obviously, again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, they have a lot of different roles, though. There's, like, seed, which is, like, for targeting radar anti-air. There's, like, close air support. There's cap, like, close air uh, protection. Um, there's, like, all sorts of helicopter, uh, helicopters, planes. So left to right, I've got this jet. is like, my napalm bomber. Uh, I just use it to drop fucking fire on cities. I've got the Kahu um, anti-tank jet. This I use to just knock out enemy tanks that are really scary. This is, like, my killer for, like, T-70s uh, and shit. I basically use this for like T-65s, T-70s. Um, any sort of Russian tank that's a little scary, I use these. Um, as you'll probably see, these are, jets are expensive, and you only get like three. I've got three Kahos, oh, three Kahos, three MB, 339CBs, and three F-11Cs. Um, these are my, like, uh, bombing jet. So I don't really use a lot of uh, close air protection in this deck. Uh, this is more just all like close air support. 
um, with this basically being like big pounder bombs dropped at a big cluster, uh, anti tank missiles, and then napalm. I, I, I like running close air support uh, with jets rather than uh, anti air, but I do in my other decks have a lot more anti air jets, like jets to fight other jets. Gotcha. Uh, and then finally, naval naval's a bit different than all the other the other ones, um, in that it's basically free to buy the slots. Um, you'll see here you've got next to the jets you've got cost four and cost five, and then next to the helicopters cost two, cost three, cost three. Um, mm -hmm. These slots you can buy with your activation points up in the top right here, but as you can see, this deck is already maxed out. It's sixty out of sixty. That's kind of what I was talking about, about specializing. We basically, it let me buy a lot more slots of infantry and vehicles because I'd specialized into motorized. That's why I've got 60 activation points and that's also why I'm maxed out and that's why these these sections are very full. <laughs> you know, left to right, it's quite a long line of unit types. Um, versus like helicopters where there's two. There's two slots, you know. Um, naval's different. So na naval, you don't have to buy the slots. They're free. Um, but they're only applicable on maps with water. So a lot of the Red Dragon maps are just land. Um, so you won't need to worry about naval. But it's worth always having navy in your deck, just because it's free. Um, and also, when you do play on a water map, your deck's ready to play on a water map, basically. Uh, okay. So left to right, uh, the basically the naval category has all the other categories kind of combined, but they spawn on the sea. Um, so LCU 1610s are like my uh, support. Um, they're like, you know, filled with supply. They're basically just a supply vessel. Um, I have Diggers 90. I don't know if you can see it because it does it. But um, Diggers 90, you have basically uh, troops coming in on a waterborne LAV. So it's the exact same unit as the one up in infantry. Um, but it, it spawns on the water. So I use it for like taking uh, regions that the enemy hold like around islands and stuff. Um, they're like my waterborne infantry. Then I have like a destroyer or cruiser, um, the Hatsuyuki. It's a pretty big one. Um, it also counts as a command vehicle for the purpose of taking sea tiles. Like if there's a region in the ocean, you want to have like a water commander to take it. Um, and then I have Straubs. They, I love these things. Um, these are like little uh, patrol boats. I think they're Swedish. Uh, Swedish patrol boats um, that have like anti uh, grenade launchers, machine guns, and anti-tank missiles. Um, so you basically just park them in a river and they fuck shit up. That being said, <laughs> I only have three of them, so I use them pretty wisely. I just send them out as a little patrol force and try and keep them safe. <laughs> Um, okay. And then finally I have Dong Hayes, which are like a destroyer again, uh, but these are quite good anti-air. I use them as like my anti-air screen for the Hatsuyukis, um, for my like fleet actions. Um, and that's naval. Na Naval's pretty basic and you don't need to always use it. It just It's, it's just worth building naval anyway, just so your deck's capable in water maps. Um, there's some maps where you need navy way more than others, but for that case, uh, you'd probably want to build a specialized deck for that. And not a lot of people like playing on those big naval maps, as far as I can tell. Uh, at least in my friend group. Alright. So that's that's basically the deck overview. Uh, now let's go into detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, now you'll see on the screen, I've, I've basically gone into editing the deck. Um, and this is where you can basically preview all the units. Um, and where you can like put them into your deck and you have a lot more options and you can see on the right there is a hover over shit There's way more stats going on uh, On the right side of the screen there, Unimod Cargo um, Hello Bushfrog, thank you for the follow um, So these basically these basically cover all the units in a bit more detail and so up the top here You have basically you can select by nation um, as this is an Anzac deck. It's only got Anzac there at the moment um, and basically you can go through the tabs you saw on the other screen, uh, up the top here. So as you okay. can see, as you can see, this infantry tab is all the infantry I showed you before. It's just in more detail. And then down here, these are all the options available from Anzac as, as a deck. Um, okay. so if I go to logistics, let's say I got rid of this commander, delete a, delete a matter of my deck. You'll see now I've got cost three for the slot. And I've got 57 out of 60 activation points. So I can still buy something that costs 3. 
So I can either put another unit here, or I could go to like air, for example. Oh, it's too expensive. It's cost four. So I can't I can't buy more jets. Um but I could buy more helicopters. It's only cost two for the next lot. So let's let's say I, oh I can't. So here's another problem. You have a unit limitation on certain unit types within certain countries. So with the Bush Ranger, you see this little blue number, zero out of two? Yeah. I have yeah. already used up all my allocation of Bush Rangers for this army. Okay. Bush Ranger, what is that? What are you putting in the chat? This is some weird bot shit. I'm going to ban you straight away. You got five seconds to answer me. All right. I'll deal with that in a second. Um, but I quite like having these Aslaves. So here you can see the Aslaves are 140 cost in the game. Uh, oh, it's an import. It's a deck import. Oh, cool. Okay. Sorry, I just get a lot of weird bots coming on my fucking Twitch and sending me stupid blinks and shit. So I just, I immediately got uh, reactionary and I apologize. Um, I will import the deck in a minute. I just want to use this deck as a example because I know it really well. Um, so if I'm gonna. Those are getting the pistol ready. Reeducated. <laughs> now, now, before you buy a unit as well, you can just double click it or automatically add it to your deck up at the top there. Um, okay. you can also though see on the top right here, you'll see there's these like rookie trained hardened veteran and elite. Um, this mm -hmm. is basically what level of experience they'll have when they enter the battlefield. Um, they can actually earn battlefield experience as well and level up in-game. Um, so like if I start it trained and then this unit does really well, they might become like hardened or veteran by the end of the match. Um, but just this is like where they come in. Um, as you'll see for this Aslev, I can mm -hmm. only buy trained versions. Uh, as okay. you get, if you hover over it, you get bonuses for the higher elite you are. Um, and... The more elite you are, the less you have at the start of Battlefield. Um, so, like, for example, uh, elites, you might get, like, two units, like, two squads of whatever you're buying, whereas, like, rookie, you might get, like, 20. So, gotcha. th this unit I can only buy trained, and then you see this green number here? It means I get five, five of these as lives. Uh, I think I can rotate it. Yeah, there we go. Um, so you get five of these, you get five of these as lives for the price of, uh, this unit slot here. Um, on the right, you see way more detail about the unit. So the star means it's the commander, so it can capture, um, it can basically capture, uh, regions. Uh, the orange number is how much it costs in game. So it costs 140, like, I don't know, credits, resources. Um, and this, and this as lab just has a GPMG. So just like a light machine gun or heavy machine gun. I think it's a light machine gun. Um, with a range of 875 against ground targets, 525 against helicopters, and it can't engage uh, planes. I can't, I can't buy jets, which is basically what you'd expect. Um, accuracy's pretty low, but it's machine gun, so a rate of fire will make up for it. Uh, stabilizer comes into play a bit more with tanks. Um, see, a lot of these stats aren't full because they're just, they're just not applicable. Um down here is kind of more important uh it has very weak armor fucking piss poor armor in the front sides uh and then back and top are basically paper thin this thing basically okay. you shoot it with infantry it'll die damn a tank would murder it you know like a tank would just absolutely just one shot kill it um no point in the front lines got it yeah but this is the commander so you don't want to anyway down here you've yeah. got some important stats as well uh it's got an amphibious stat so this guy can drive through rivers, um, but it's slow, 150 kilometers an hour, uh, versus its road speed of 150 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's got bad stealth, so you know enemy will find it pretty easily um, once they're near it. Uh, fuel is basically like how much fuel it carries, and then autonomy is how far it can basically travel before it's out of fuel. Uh, so these are quite important to look at when you're like kind of factoring in like a lot of land transports and stuff. Um, tanks are very hungry on the fuel. Uh, and a lot don't have very good autonomy, so you kind of want to supply them pretty regularly. Uh, this is its speed when it's not on the road, um, 100 kilometers an hour. And then size is just, yeah, like how big is it? Um, optics is how good its uh, line of sight is. This this is more important for like recon um, than for other units. So don't worry too much about optics for like, you know, commanders and fucking transport trucks and shit. Um, as you see here, here's a transport truck stat line. Uh, it's really basic. No weapons, no armor. Uh, but when you're looking at transport trucks, the important stat is supply capacity. 
this is like how much supply it carries um if we compare the two trucks this one carries a fuckload and this truck carries less it only carries 500 supply but if you look at the costs these trucks are 10 and i have 18 of them versus this costs 30 and i only have eight of them but it's a bigger truck you know so it kind of, it kind of follows logically how shit works um but it takes a bit of time learning kind of how units work and what they do um for example looking in this logistics tab here i've got a uh, commander it's a helicopter i can tell that because it's got the little star and it's you know it's in the logistics tab um there's a land rover which is a commander an aslav which is a commander and then infantry commanders in four different flavors of transport hence why the cost goes up gradually so i can either buy them in trucks aslavs hueys or like blackbirds black blackbirds blackhawks I think the S70 is like the Australian Blackhawk. Um, then there's down here. This is this is not a commander because you can see here there's no star. Um, this is basically a supply Chinook. So if you look on the right there, you'll see it's got supply two thousand five hundred liters. So supply helicopters are expensive and you don't get many, but they can normally carry a fuckload of like resources. So these are quite good for supplying the front line if you can get them in without getting shot down. Um, and they hold quite a lot so they can supply like tanks or you know attack helicopters and stuff like that that are very hungry units um but for like infantry i tend to use like trucks and this deck i don't have any transport heli helicopters i just use tra uh, transport trucks um then you've got the fob the fob is uh stationary you can only place it at the start of the map um but it holds sixteen thousand supply so it's like the most Ooh. it's it's the highest level of supply at all uh bad optics very big poor stealth it's you know it's, it's basically a building um you can't move it once you start you can capture them from the enemy though or the enemy can capture yours so if if you have an uncontested proximity to a fob and there's no enemy units nearby uh you will just capture it and then it's yours and if it's still got supply in it you can take supply so Ooh. that's that's quite useful um just just quickly uh capture and bring a bunch of your own supply trucks and just steal <laughs> so you don't want to use supply it has to be combat units um I, th I think if you sent supply trucks at an enemy fob they'd capture your supply trucks uh trucks also ah. trucks can also be captured um but if you had like one tank at the enemy base and they had no units you would take their base <laughs> okay um fobs you normally get two per country so if you're playing like a coalition deck um like uh bushfrog has linked um we'll import that near the end um we you basically get two fobs per deck so like if i'm just playing anze i only get two fobs total if i want um i've only got one in the deck though because you can only have one per slot if that makes sense so i'd have to buy a whole nother slot if i wanted more than one fob um often okay. often you won't need more than one fob um in my heavy artillery support deck where i'm helping all my friends i have uh uk fobs canadian fobs and anzac fobs so i have like <laughs> like three i think um or maybe, maybe, yeah three but with a total available of six if i wanted to go crazy but that's like way too many yeah. three three is more than enough honestly i mean one is almost more than enough if you're playing you know you'd hope that people when you're playing co-op games um are using their own fobs rather than just leeching all the supply off you uh but that kind of <laughs> depends how your friends play i know my friends like to use a lot of heavy artillery and anti-air uh right next to my fucking fob so when i come back and it's empty it's like oh god damn it um you, <laughs> you can turn off what things supply so you can turn off you know like ammo supply so the, the fob only gives out like fuel um for example but like i don't know i like to leave it open just so people if they do need a supply they can um and then down yeah, the bottom yeah. here we've got the transport trucks these are the same as the ones in my deck it's just i have one more available of each type so if i bought in this slot i could buy more transport trucks if i wanted for example so i'm, so I'm guessing it's a good idea to where if you place a fob just place some infantry there and just keep them there or some shit yeah i typically let me screen the fob with a little bit of anti-air and a little bit of um anti-tank and that's about it really um i normally place my fobs pretty close to where your infantry come in uh in the game um i'll go over that in a bit more detail when we actually get into the map um but basically you have like corridors you've got like air land and sea corridors which are like the direction on the map your units come from so your fobs normally near a corridor so you can normally spawn in units pretty quick to react if stuff starts fighting your fob but you want to have a little bit of defense yeah at least a little 
Or a lot. If you're getting fucking swarmed, you want to have like a pretty hard defense. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's the logistics tab in a bit more detail. Um, infantry. As you can see, I've got my choices at the top. Uh, but here's all the available choices, and there's a lot. Um, assault pioneers. I don't use them. Uh, these are like flamethrower teams. Um, I just find them too short range. They're really cool, but I just never have found use for them. Um, I know they're meant to be really good in towns, but I normally use like special forces and infantry for towns anyway, and they're a bit more versatile, whereas flamethrowers are like just too limited in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's fair. If you have a look on the right side of the screen though, you can see they're equipped, they're equipped with both SLR rifles and a flamethrower. Um, so they've got the L1A1 SLR and the M2 Sorry, not M2. M9 flamethrower. And there's different stats for both. Um, and let's actually have a look at one. So here's a squad here. Um, if I wanted to buy them, I'll just uh, I'll delete the M-Raw. So if I wanted to buy them, I could buy these guys as hardened or veteran. Uh, if I bought them as hardened, I'd get 16 squads of them. If I bought them as veteran, I'd only get 10. But the cost doesn't change. You'll see they're both 30. You just get less, but they're more elite. Okay. So it's def yeah, so definitely uh quality over quantity. Yeah, yeah. And if you have a look here, you'll notice um on the preview, you can normally see the squad, what they kinda look like, how many guys you get, um, and the mm -hmm. transport they're coming in. So these guys, you know, they're in a yeah if I bought these ones that have a black hawk. Or if I bought these okay. ones that have a Huey, uh these ones they're in an Aslav, these ones they're in a Stoli. Um you uh, vehicles, transport vehicles are uh, shared through the tab so you might see here in under Assault Pioneers I've got two out of two available so I can have two squads of Assault Pioneers but I've only got one out of three S70s uh, that's because I've already got S70s up here, you'll notice I've got S70s for my RBS 70s and I've got S70s for my Milan teams so ah, you've got to keep an eye on that, hence why you need to kind of spread your transports across the types like, I used S70s for these, Hueys for these, and then Stolies for these, and a Chinook for these, just to kind of, like, you know, change it up a bit. And you'll notice, too, some squads don't have the choice. Some squads, like, I mean, Diggers 90 here, they only come in Stolies or Aslabs. They don't come in on Helos. They're, like, your boot, your boot infantry. What did I delete that this deck is now not... Oh, it was the Aslab in Command, wasn't it? And this is meant to be, yeah, there's meant to be uh, emeralds. Uh, let's just go. What do I want in the emeralds? Oh, more trucks. So I'll take those. Um. So yeah, down down here you've basically got. Uh, sometimes you'll see units that have like diggers, and then you got diggers ninety. Um, a lot of the armies do this. It's basically two different time periods of the same unit. So you basically got like nineteen. Uh -huh. You basically got nineteen eighties diggers, which have. Uh, L1A1 SLRs, the M72 Law, and the Bren L4 as their, like, squad guns. And then if you look at Diggers 90, uh, they basically have very similar... Like, they've still got a Law, but it's a modern version. And they've got a Steyr and a Manimi instead. And you'll probably know, so, like, you can look at the stats and basically go, oh, Diggers 90 are more expensive, but they're generally better. Okay, so... Hold on. Okay, so the non-numbered one is the more modern one, I'm assuming. Which one? The non-numbered one, like, you know, the one that doesn't say 90s, is the more modern no, one. No, no, they're, no, they're normally older, because this is set in during, oh. during, like, the Cold War. Um, if you, oh, okay. if you, if you want to get okay. the exact date down the bottom right here, it'll say year. To give you kind of a rough oh. idea of the uh, time period. So these are 1975 diggers, whereas the, okay. no, the diggers 90 are 1990. So just a bit more modernized in general. Um, okay. I like I like to be relatively elite. So while my army does have some old shit, uh, my SS, SASR, uh, 1991, uh, 1988, 1985, uh, 1990, and then finally 1975 for the Emeralds. So I do have like a bit of a year variety in my decks, um, but I tend to trend towards the more modern, the, the stronger, you know? Okay. Um, you can specialize in your deck even further, so you can go like Australia, motorized. Then you could do pre nineteen eighty five, and you'll get even more units. But then you're limited to pre nineteen eighty five, and I don't like doing that personally. Gotcha. 
Um, you can even do pre-1980, I think, which is, like, really hard. Um, you get fuckloads of units, but they're really, like, trash quality, in my opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, so... It takes a bit of getting used to, but the backgrounds of each unit will give you kind of a clue of what they do as well. So, like, you know, flamethrowers, obviously. Uh, this icon is just, like, infantry, I think. Like, general infantry. Um, this is, like, anti-tank missiles. Uh, so, like, tow missiles, things like that. Uh, yeah, the AI do always rush. Um, Ahmed, welcome to the stream, by the way. We're just kind of going through deck building first, and then I'll go through how to actually play in a minute. Um, uh, this icon is like, uh, recallless rifles. Uh, this icon is like anti-air infantry. And this icon is normally like elites or like special forces. Uh, moving to support, we've got a pretty limited selection in the Anzac deck. It's basically, uh, <laughs> big artillery, light artillery, uh, anti-air missiles, anti-air missiles, classic. <laughs> um, whoa. Thank you for the follow. It's appreciated. Um, the difference between these two is pretty subtle. Um, it's probably hard to tell immediately. Uh, basically, if you look at the top right corner, you've got these NATO icons for what the unit is. Uh, this is the symbol for like anti-air missiles. Um, what is it? What is your hand doing? Um, versus the other one, it's the same. There's a little R. <laughs> the difference is radar. So if you look at the weapon, this has radar as an icon. Uh, radar is typically more accurate, um, and typically hits, like, it just, it's just better, like, the range is better, uh, if you look at the weapon stats on the right there for these two trait rapiers, it's a very similar weapon, it's just one's radar and one's not, um, and you'll see the range increases for the trait rapier against, like, helicopters and planes, and the accuracy goes up as well. Um, the problem with radar is it's more expensive, A, so you're paying more per unit. Um, and also, it can be targeted by what's called SEED, um, S-E-A-D, which are jets that can detect radar and have special radar homing missiles. So if they have those oh. jets, uh, it's kind of more relevant for multiplayer. Um, it's not so relevant for AI battles, because the AI are fucking brain dead when it comes to radar and tier. They don't try and seed, <laughs> they don't try and seed you like, at all. Um, but if you're playing multiplayer, you can actually turn your radars off. So a lot of veterans kind of... Uh, it's probably getting outside the scope of this tutorial a little bit. But they, you, they normally turn the radar off. Then when they see an enemy jet, they'll turn the radar back on and engage it. Just to kind of minimize the chance the enemy hunts their radar AI -A -A down using seed aircraft. Um, seed aircraft is like the uh, the Growler, or the Prowler, I think it's called. The Prowler for the US deck is a jet that can engage uh, radar into air. I use one in my US deck to hunt down Tunguskas, because I fucking hate Tunguskas. Um, <laughs> they're very, very scary anti-air that Russians have. So I, I have a jet dedicated to basically just hunting them for my team. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's what that's the difference between radar and non-radar. Um, you also have stuff like spag guns, which are just like a big pile of auto cannons or something mounted on a truck, um, which are pretty awesome against helicopters and sometimes against jets. Um... But this deck doesn't have those as an option, so they're just not here. Basically, the support the support deck for motorized New Zealand is really limited. Or motorized Anzac. Uh, tanks, pretty self-explanatory. Here you'll see there's a bit of stuff, though, that I don't have in my deck. Um, I have light tanks that I don't have in my deck. Especially I've got the M41 Scorpion and the Scorpion 90. Uh, I don't have these in my deck. I just use Leopards, which are a more sort of medium tank. Um, so that's... This, this will just have your selection of tanks. And if you look at them, you can kind of get an idea. Like, this one just has a big 90 mil gun. Oh, sorry, don't see tans really playing up today. Um, this is just a big 90 mil gun. Uh, accuracy 55%. It's pretty good. Uh, 2,100 meter engagement range, so it can fight at 2Ks. Um, it's got pretty paper thin armor, though, if you look at the bottom right. It's pretty, like, you know, most Anzac tanks are pretty hot garbage, to be honest. Even the Leopard AS1 Plus, which is, like, the top tank, is still, like, oh, front armor 8, but, like, 3, 2, 2. So it's still pretty paper thin. And um, it engages at 2.2 kilometers, 65% uh, accuracy. So she got a stabilizer, too, so, like, a decent stabilizer stat. So it can fire on the move pretty good. Um, 
decent AP. So, like, it's not a bad tank. It's just not as good as a lot of the other tanks. <laughs> available to other countries but again this deck is not designed around being an armored deck so that's that's why you know <laughs> if i was going to build an armored deck i'd go like us or russia basically um maybe like germany west germany <coughs> uh maybe even england kind of like my, my personal preference that's the beauty of it there's a lot of variety um recon a lot of choices a lot of choices um <laughs> i i like to mix it up between like helicopters medium and infantry um in helicopters and as uh as you can see here there's like two varieties of helicopter with varying stats um there's lavs there's weird little armored cars there's fucking little like jeeps like you're gonna get real small uh there's nzacs and no no force so like elite troops in various flavors of transports um with these, the most important stat in the recon tab is 100% the optics tab. You want okay. the highest possible optics. This is like just not even a question. Um, exceptional is the best. This, this is what you're aiming for. You want exceptional. Okay. Uh, I think the only thing in my deck that doesn't have exceptional is the helicopter at very good, but it's a helicopter, so it can basically see over all terrain features, so that kind of makes up for it being not the best optics uh as labs no. are not too good they're only good but yeah i'm actually checking now i like very good and very good okay i don't actually have exception on my deck i'm stupid uh you had a question uh so with optics is it just view distance or everything within the view distance after a certain amount of time like I, how I, exactly it's kind of like a combination of it I, I don't know how exactly what it does but from what I can tell, it's basically a combination of view range and view quality, like what they can see in that bubble. Okay. So, like, if you've got exceptional optics, you'll see the enemy coming very far away, and you'll also be able to kind of discern what they've got. Like, you can hover over the unit and get more detail. Um, you have to do a lot of silhouette, kind of. <laughs> uh, I'll show you. A, I'll show you a game shortly, and then we can have a bit of a look. Okay. um vehicles again same thing just a bunch of weird shit uh I, I like the thing is the vehicles is just your wacky vehicles section um there's a lot of weird stuff in here like sometimes you get like and not so much in the anzac deck but i mean there's a fucking jeep here with a there's a jeep here with like a recoilless 106 mil rifle it's oh just, god so it's just a hilarious shoot and scoot jeep um so stuff like that is like normally in your vehicle section uh the ontos for america is hilarious it's got like four, it's a tiny tiny little tank with like four recoilless rifles um it's adorable and that's in the <laughs> u.s uh there's also some weird shit that's kind of useful for other builds in your vehicle section like i don't know what it is but lavs are like really good at killing helicopters for me because they can engage them at 1.5 clicks and it's a fucking 25 mil bushmaster um, so I normally actually use these as, like, anti-air as well. I use them as, like, my screen for my infantry from helicopters, um, and they fuck them up. And things like, uh, M113s, like these, but with the, uh, the Vulcan minigun in the US deck is, like, really good against helicopters. So, uh, that, that's kind of an example. The vehicle, the thing of vehicles is just a very weird tab that you can find lots of weird fun shit in. <laughs> uh, the fair intex I was talking about before. They're terrible, but I love them. They have a uh, Browning 1919 and the fucking Intac missile, which is shockingly bad. 35% accuracy, never seems to fucking hit tanks when I want them to. <laughs> um, I, as I said earlier, I buy 42 of them in bulk and just throw them at the enemy for a laugh. Um, don't do that normally if you want to be good. I, I like being terrible and like having a bit of fun with this game. So I saw a Kiwi logo on it. <laughs> yeah. It's a kangaroo on the front oh uh, it was a angle i was looking at it, it was a kiwi all oh, right i think there's so a, like leaning way back is there a kiwi on i think there's a kiwi on something I'm sure i've seen one before but i don't know where um helicopters <laughs> anzac deck you get one choice you get the bush ranger um but it has twin one uh miniguns and heat uh heat rockets so okay. yeah it's fun uh zero armor on all sides so absolutely <laughs> shocking like it will just go down to like you know a piece of string will take it out um 
uh, Anzac Dick is not the dick for helicopters, honestly. It's uh, it's like, here's some helicopters if you need them, but uh, this shit. Um, other decks have way more selection and way better options. Like, the US deck, for example, has a lot of Halo options and they're a lot better. Uh, Russia has an insane amount. Uh, they get, like, the Hind, like, all the Hind variants, MI8s, like, just a bunch of weird shit that's amazing. Um, <laughs> Air, a lot more choice you'll see than the helicopter tab. Oh, you got Skyhawks, Kahoos, MBs, Stripe Masters. Um, now, you start seeing this big pile of stuff when you're making your deck and you go, what the fuck does what do? Like, what does this all do? Um, honestly, it's just time and experience. And probably the most important thing to look for is this symbol here on the right. This NATO symbol, um, I think in default Red Dragon, it'll have a different symbol. Um, there's, a setting in, uh, there's a setting in settings to change it to NATO symbols. Um, and I use NATO symbols because I think they're a lot clearer to understand. And they're also, if you learn this, they're actually applicable to real life or like armor or anything. Uh, cause they're the, you know, they're the classic NATO symbols, uh, that real life uses. Um, I think, I think, don't quote me on that. I'm not a military man. Um, quote Dozer. Uh... So, so you'll see on these symbols, it's like an infinity symbol, uh, with like a little hump. Uh, I like to think of this as like a hill. Um, if you hover over it, it's ground attack aircraft. So all ground attack, uh, there is hope. Basically, it didn't take me long before I was really enjoying the game. Um, I mean, it's it's good. Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's complicated, but because it's complicated, it's really good. There's a lot of depth for you to learn. There's a lot of fun to be had. Um, it's really good playing against like easy AI with friends. It's probably hard to recommend it. Um, just to get the hang of it. Just play co-op, you know, um, against the AI until you kind of get the hang of it. Um... Or, or go online straight away. Uh, it's hard. Like the multiplayer community is pretty. Uh, I don't want to say toxic, but um, they're really good, and they're also really. Uh, a lot of them have many, many years in this game. Um, but yeah, back back to unit types. Uh, aircraft are a good example because there's a couple of really clear roles. Uh, so these are all ground attack aircraft. As I hover over them, you'll notice they're all the same symbol, like the little hill with the infinity symbol. Um, uh -huh. But then if I move to something like this that's still you know ground attack it's, it's a bomber that though is a different symbol you'll notice now it's an infinity symbol with a little a above it um if you don't notice that it's the where is it it's um over here at the top fuck sakes keep moving off the phantom why does it do that just click, maybe i should just click it um the the symbol over here so what that means is this is uh, this this jet is basically designed for anti-air like cap like fighting other jets um you may be confused because you'll see stats for the vulcan minigun uh for ground and helicopters uh like oh this can engage ground targets yeah it can it's not very good at it um i would not recommend this to fight ground in a pinch yeah i could do a strafing run on a truck or something but it's fucking shocking at it um i would recommend this just to fight other jets uh the reason you can tell if you're not looking at the symbol is it has anti-air only missiles and anti-air long-range missiles you know this can fight other jets at seven thousand meters with its with its semi-act radar missiles um jets jets work a little bit differently to land vehicles and that they don't come in through uh you know they don't stay on the map they basically evac off the map for refueling and rearming like once they're out of missiles they'll fuck off um or you can send them off prematurely like if you're if you send them over an area then you go oh shit there's actually a lot of anti-air there you can bug them out um, but I'll get to that when we get into the map. Uh, then there's more types, so that's anti-air. Uh, this, this symbol, where it's just like an infinity symbol, this means it's kind of multi-role. Um, I like to specialize, but that's up to you. Uh, Ahmed, um, in that case, I'd probably play solo against AI. It might not sound the most fun, but honestly, you'll learn the game, and then you can take it to multiplayer online and, uh, play with people. Um multi-role is as the name suggests they can do, kind of do everything but they do kind of everything you know jack of all trades master of none that's how yeah. i phrase it uh it's got a 20 mil vulcan it's got some 500 kg bombs it's got some ntm missiles like it kind of does it all but eh. that being said it's also an f-18 so it's pretty powerful like it's a pretty good vehicle but um i, I like to specialize personally uh the mirage hey, you know what say um Although Master of None is better than Master of One. Yeah, they do say that. So I, I think that's kind of the benefit of this game is that you can kind of play however you want. 
Uh, so that's another anti, you know, air superiority fighter. Um, when you come to the ground attack, again, they're all ground attack, but they're different flavors. This one, for example, it's just six napalm bombs. It doesn't have any other, it doesn't have any other weapons. It's just got six 340 kilo napalm bombs. You can tell, you can tell the napalm because you've got the little tag there, NPLM. Uh, if you hover over stuff, it'll normally tell you what it does. Um, I like these to basically just ruin the jungle and towns when I know there's infantry in there. Hence why there's three in my deck. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, the Kahu, uh, it's got these Maverick missiles. So it's got heat, high explosive anti-tank, um, fire and forget. So basically they can fire, strafe a jet and then fuck off. Uh, three three kilometer range against ground targets. These, these are my jets for fighting tanks. Uh, things like the A-10 Warthog are pretty effective against tanks. You know, they normally have missiles like this, but also like the big fucking brrrr. So, yeah. You, if you if you have a bit of real life knowledge um, about military equipment, this game is a lot easier because you kind of have a rough idea of what things are meant to do in real life. And the game kind of reflects that. But yeah, if, if you need help, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, more towards the chat, Lolly, rather than you. I could just, you know, <laughs> we'll probably just play and you'll probably get a hang of it. <laughs> um, I do have a question. Yeah. Uh, how do I get this chicken shit outfit? <laughs> well, we're going to move. But... Uh, we're almost ready to move to. I'm going to import Bushfrog's deck and then we're going to um, have a look at that. I'll do like a little review. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to move to a match. And I'll build a real rough deck and I'll move to a match. Um, here's the naval tab. Uh, these are all command ships of various sizes. The Congo is 420 in cost, but it's fucking huge. Um, as you can see, it's got uh, anti-everything anti, anti 127 mil gun at the front, uh, eight anti-ship missiles, and a bunch of anti-air missiles. 96 radar missiles for anti-air. <laughs> Um, these are just kind of like your flagship. I don't like to use them because they're like too big a target personally and they cost so much. Um, so I don't normally bother, but that's what they are. So is the frame rate fucking? I think the water's made my... Oh, that's fine. Uh, I think the Oliver Hazard Perry is a really, really cool ship in real life. In war game, for some reason, it just seems to be absolutely ass. Um, as an example, like... You kind of have to play the game to work out if stuff's good sometimes as well. Like, on paper, looking at all the stats, this seems to be the perfect fucking ship, honestly. It's got a bit of anti-ground, bit of anti-air. Um, it's not so expensive. It's a command ship. So I put a bunch of them in my decks when I first started playing this game. Um, and I just found they just didn't perform. So I took them out. So you can kind of edit your decks on the fly as you learn. And you go, okay, that unit's fucking shit. Never using that again. Doesn't work for my playstyle um that's that's what's cool about this game i guess is the customization um okay. as you'll see here though in the naval deck a lot of these ships just have a blue force symbol rather than a, an anzac flag up in the top left corner here or up in the top left corner of the unit card here um that's because the naval deck again the naval section is fucking weird um it basically takes from your entire coalition rather than just your country of choice gotcha uh, so it's Anzac units and the Blue 4 boats. So like the Bait Coup here, I think this is South Korean. Like for some reason it's just like a random South Korean boat in the Anzac army. Um, I think it's to reflect the fact that a lot of the nations don't have navies. Like I don't know if Czechoslovakia has a navy. Um, so I mean it's a, la it's a landlocked nation. I'd highly doubt they would have a, a navy. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so here, here you got commanders, you got naval commanders, you got boats. You got some weird shit like anti-ship helicopters. So it's just a sh it's just a helicopter with two Exocet missiles. Um, in my experience, anti-ship helicopters are trash, but that's just maybe because of how, how I use them. Uh, I normally use anti-ship jets or boats. Uh, there, there's an example. That's an anti-ship jet. Uh, it's an intruder with four missiles. Um, yeah, a lot of weird stuff. Weird. Oh, these are naval jets. Hence the infinity symbol and the a and the anchor um so it basically has like anti-ship missiles and some anti-air missiles uh it's basically like carry i think of them as like carrier jets like the kind of jets you'd see on like an aircraft carrier these are typically this category here um some boats are small enough to go in the rivers in the map so 
thumb up. You kind of just have to play to get that experience. Um, uh, for example, one I know that... Oh, here's, the, here's that supply ship, by the way. The LCU. This is the one that carries 10,000 supply. So it's very handy, but it's locked to the sea. So not very handy for supplying your land, land troops. Unless they get close. Uh, there's some land trucks that have anti-ship missiles in this category, which is fucking weird. Um, oh, here's an example. This weird monitor boat. Uh, this is capable of going up the rivers. This is small enough to go up the river. I, I think that's what the GB means. Like, gunboat. Um, these are basically boats that are small enough to, like, navigate the rivers, I think, normally. Uh, Monitor Zippo. This is one with a flamethrower. Or napalm rounds, at least. Um, I personally like using the straw I was telling you about. Uh, so these are the ones I love using. Because they've got a Mark 19... Dual M2 Brownings and Hellfire missiles, so they're quite they're quite good against a bunch of shit. Um, but yeah, that's the Navy tab, and that hopefully gives you a bit of an overview of the whole thing of how to build the deck, or at least how the deck works. Um, for a comparison, here's the starting deck when you first. This is like one of the default decks that comes with the game for Blue Four. Um, so this is all of NATO. So you've got obviously France there, you've got Anzac there, you've got US there. Um, but this is just a fucking wacky mix of try it all, basically. Um, which is really good for newbies. Um, I would highly recommend anyone new to the game try this deck out and give it a go, because it kind of has a little bit of everything. You've got you know, s'mores, you've got light riflemen, you've got British SAS, you've got German infantry uh, of two varieties. You know, you've got... Uh, fuck even is that the Marta, the mistral oh yeah <laughs> a little a little rocket for fighting air uh you got uh these which are more like a spag um you'll notice the symbol here anti-aircraft artillery so this is like your, your big guns that can just light up helicopters and jets uh this one's a radar version hence the little spinning radar on it etc etc um i probably talked too much about the deck now uh there's a big big artillery piece 155 mil artillery um honestly experiment play with it uh google it uh watch war documentaries i don't know like there's so many ways to kind of engage in this game <laughs> uh, so let's let's kind of have a look at what it looks like when you actually build a deck oh also just for just for the people that will say you're focusing on blow four um here's the red four starting deck so as you can see it's mainly russia a uh, little bit of what Poland, yeah. Poland before the uh, collapse of the Soviet Empire, uh, East Germany, um, North Korea. I don't know if there's any China there. Um, is China even in the game? I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, their deck has like you know obviously a lot more things like really nasty helicopters. Um, they're the kings of having really nasty helicopters uh ai ai will use a lot of helos against you um if you're fighting red four and quite often they have shit like this the mi-24 so you know like a it's got rockets it's got anti air missiles it's, yeah it's just scary um but that's that's like another look at the red four deck because it's very oh, also these are hilarious the buratino uh it fires it's 220 mil napalm rockets and it can fire 30 in a volley uh, this is absolutely terrifying if you have infantry in a town and you see one of this one of these light you up. They're pretty short range, but god damn they're scary. Uh, also the dreaded Tunguska is also one of my biggest fears. Uh, anti air truck <laughs> with radar that's got missiles and a thirty mil gun. Times two. Uh, this thing will just murder anything near it in terms of air yeah, units. It looks like it. Yeah, I basically use my seed jet just to hunt these specifically. Um, but yeah, that's that's the red four decks. So as an example, let's say we're making a US deck, um, and we'll call this uh, Tonk. Um, we're going to go blue four. So th these are your choices. You can go blue four, or red four. I'll uh, we'll go blue four. Uh, we're going to go. These are these are the these are the country specific or coalitions. Um, so here you've got all the choices. Uh, you can play all the specific countries here. Uh, Israel is a DLC. 
um i think also netherlands or so, some of these are dlc um i own some of the dlc so some of them are available some of them aren't uh you kind of just have to feel that for yourself um but we're gonna go usa so by going usa we get more activation points to make our deck um and we get more availability of most of the categories but we're restricted to usa uh then we're gonna go here you can see a bit of the bonuses you get for each category so like you can go marines which just gives you plane and infantry and three slots available for naval um under siege <laughs> 23 us marines um well, we're gonna go armored armored's pretty basic armored's just like tank so 2 xp for all units of type tanks so basically free upgrades to your eliteness um all units cost negative one activation points so you can have more slots of tanks um and plus four slots available for tanks so you can basically max out your tank slots uh but we're only allowed tanks effectively okay. restrained um you can this is what I was talking about earlier, where you can narrow it down to protect, like actual gears, um, where you'll get more activation points. But then you're limited to pre-1980 or pre-1985. And I hate doing that, personally. I think it just limits the decks a little bit too much. And I'm already specializing in two ways. Like, country and then type. So I normally leave uh, era as all. And this is what a blank deck looks like. It is empty these are all your slots in terms of cost um and you've got 60 i got 60 activation points to spend to make this deck um and i kind of need to fill every one of these categories um as you can see tank, uh. tanks extends all the way to the end because we've got that tank upgrade from going specialist tank um that's why these are only one cost one cost one cost one cost and there's like all the way to the right we can take many many tanks so let's just say we started out and we just want to go, you know, oh, 180 cost. This is like super elite. I just want one elite tank. Uh, oh, okay. That's my Abram's gone. Uh, I want this one, 155 cost. That must be a good tank. You get two for elite. It's two there. Um, let's go threes and then, oh, I can buy more because like, the little blue number here is one out of two. So I can have more. So I have another set of elites. And very quickly, you'll see I've got four slots filled. And that's only three, that's nine tanks total. One, one, two, three, three, that's nine. So you only have nine tanks there. This is not a good idea. This this build is already kind of not a great. The reason being, in my personal opinion, it's all expensive tanks. If you've got fuck all money in your game at the moment, you can't spawn any of these. And the enemy might be overrunning you with light, you know light trucks where one light tank would actually save you but you can't spawn anything because all your tanks are super heavy super elite 180 cost 140 cost abrams and while the abrams uh. while the abrams is amazing you kind of want a, a variety in your deck for situations so let's you know let's say we also have this piece of shit uh the m48 a5 usmc uh this thing is only 25 costs and i'm gonna have 26 of them uh, so if I get swarmed with like trucks where tank any kind of tank is better than no tank I'm just gonna spawn like five of these and ruin them because uh, it's still got a 105 mil gun it's still got you know m2 brownings it's decent it's not the worst um, so that's kind of how you want to build your deck is you kind of want to think of the costs and you don't want to have everything just be super expensive definitely have expensive units um, you'll need them for being elite but don't just have nothing but the most expensive units same goes for like any other categories um here you can see with the us deck there's a little bit more choice than the previous deck i was showing you uh each category has a lot more options um like support there's way more artillery choices for for one like three different self-propelled artillery two different big artillery uh two different uh mortar a uh, bunch of anti-air like guns then anti-air missiles um so yeah, uh, US is a bit like a bit of a bigger deck selection, but I had to rip the hometowns. Um, yeah, but I think I think that's enough. I think it's enough deck talk. Uh, it really is just coming down to experience and experimenting. And again, my my points to reiterate would be: start with the blue force starter deck or the red force starter deck. 
try it out for a few games because it's no it's not a slouch deck it's a bit generic but it's not bad um and just give it a go until you work out what you like doing in the game or if you enjoy it or what you want to do in the game all right so next category um, oh we were going to import that guy's deck out weren't we yeah uh how do you do I mean, also real quick yeah sure said we have to have a uh unit card for every slot you don't have to um you can leave oh. slots empty but you want to, you want to fill up your full activation quantity if you can uh you'll see with okay. some of my decks it's a bit oh you see this these decks are all 60 out of 60 like i've maxed them out with the blue force side of the deck is 44 out of 45 for whatever reason so you want to try oh. and maximize that out like there's obviously something in that deck missing but there's nothing here that's cost one so you know what i mean like they, they couldn't buy any more slots because they're all cost two minimum and there's only one slot remaining so yeah it's a bit, bit weird but that's the way they do it uh how do i import import let's call this uh bush frogs um and i'm gonna just take his paste so is that the whole thing i've never done this before okay well it imported it looks like it would all right let's have a look at his deck so he's gone for what well, we going uh a couple of things i can notice here it is coalition uh commonwealth so it's uk canada and anzac um but it's not specialized into a type or an era um which is fun uh 55 out of 55 and this is the allocation to the different categories so like five logistics five support blah 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 um i don't ever read this i go into the deck normally um cool so as a bit of a review this looks like a pretty good well-rounded deck honestly i don't see anything crazy here anything weird it just looks like a good deck honestly um it's got you know command infantry and helos and trucks it's got some supply trucks it's got some supply trucks it's got a fob um it's got recoilless infantry elite infantry milan infantry 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 uh anti-air gun what's that anti-air rocket artillery well yeah rocket artillery rocket artillery or cluster or whatever they are I, I i know what these are in game i don't know what you'd call them um <laughs> all right uh ahmed just so you know i'm gonna put the tutorial up on youtube so um farewell have a good one um if you want to watch the full tutorial or like catch up on the parts you miss it'll be up on youtube on the dozier channel it's dozier right not dozier waifu i think it's just dozier on youtube i can check for you um probably good for me to know that <laughs> it would be wise yes i think it's just dozier on youtube and i think it's dozier waifu on uh twitch and like yes yeah, facebook dozier. cool um yeah so then on tanks he's got a mix of some really nice canadian tanks uh, scorpion light tanks scorpion light tanks kind of like a cheap medium tank and then a pretty heavy uh british tank the challenger 2 um this is nice man look at this look at this 23 front armor so fucking chunky front armor side armor is decent back and top it yeah it's, it's a tank um but look at that stabilizer 65 percent, 70 percent accuracy two point click engagement range and 22 ap power on the main gun so this, this is a nice tank this is kind of more what you see at the top level of tanks um it can take a hit it can deal a hit uh recon it's got some nzsas gazelle hel helos and some aslevs good quantity you know like i think this is probably a bit more optimized than my decks to be honest i'm pretty newbie at this game myself so um take take whatever i say with a grain of salt experiment there's better guides out there than mine uh there's better players out there than me i'm no veteran by any means i just thought there wasn't a lot of content out there in a video format easily digestible uh by someone who's a bit of a noob for, for basic basic starting entry level like not you know not not focusing on elite multiplayer strats you know what i mean uh helos fuck all but it's a decent helo uh, it's basically got stinger missiles and anti-tank rockets or missiles 
Uh, so decent, like, you know, support healer. Um, here, we've got a air superiority fighter, a bomber, and a napalm bomber. And then navy, we've just got, yeah, a mix of ships from big to small. Uh, supply ships and some anti-ship jets. So, perfect. A very good deck. It's a, I think that would be perfectly fine in any game. Nice and well-rounded. Uh, optimized relatively well. Like a good mix of everything. Probably really good in games. I don't know. I haven't played with it. But I imagine that's just a good all-rounded deck. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Bushfrog, for submitting that one. It's good to look at like how other people play as well sometimes and see what they do with their decks. Um, yeah. So, let's just quickly, I'll show you that option to change it to NATO symbols, because I really like it. You don't have to do this, this is optional, but I, I, I like it. If you go to settings, and go to interface, on the right here you'll see icons type. Uh, RTS, I think is vanilla. Um, these are like symbols that devs have created for all the different unit types, like anti-air, anti-air, artillery, uh, infantry, blah 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 blah. Um, I, I've learned the NATO symbols, so I just use these, um, personally. This is a personal choice um so up to you i wish you'd show an example uh yeah i can show an example uh, i'll just go i'll go rts symbols first uh, uh, okay. i'll go to my deck so see see here the assault pioneers this like man with a flame icon uh it's gonna take a hot sex and uh yeah yes yeah, so the assault pioneers are like this icon the man with a flame symbol Mm -hmm. um whereas like jets you've got like jet with bombs uh jet with bombs uh versus like air superiority it's just like a jet by itself um where if i go back to the nato symbols i think i think it really is just personal preference this one i just find the nato yeah. symbols a little clearer for myself oh, oh i just quit the whole game i'm stupid i thought it was quit the menu Right, give me a second. <laughs> when you try your best and you, you don't, don't succeed. succeed. When you get what you want, but not what you need. Okay, it's back up. Don't look Didn't at my have music. to cut me off. <laughs> um, we go back to NATO symbols and look at the same units. Uh, how do I do that? Yeah, here we go. Assault pioneers, like this weird little symbol. Um, I don't use them, so it's not super relevant. But the stuff I do use, it's like infantry. Uh, anti-tank, anti-tank, anti-air, like special forces. I find the symbols just a little easier to read, um, especially when it comes to stuff like jets. I'm just like ground attack, uh, anti-air, all purpose. Like I find the symbols just a bit easier to read personally, but up to you. Um, it's really personal preference. It just means at a moment's notice I know what any particular unit's kind of good at. Even if I don't know the nation that well. Gotcha, gotcha. So let's let's look at how to actually play. Um, there's obviously campaigns. The campaigns are pretty cool as far as I can tell. They're like alternative history. Um, we're not going to cover that today. Uh, they're like set in various years. Various countries. Um, but we're going to look at Skirmish. This is kind of the important. The all important menu that you'll probably use a lot. Uh, I'm just going to check my Steam. Because... I'm getting a message. Probably my friend who plays Red Dragon being like, we should play Red Dragon, I just saw you launch it. <laughs> yeah, he, he messaged me. <laughs> um, so... Um, sorry, I'm just replying to my friend on. Uh, I'm just replying to my friend on Steam because he's headed me up because he probably saw me launch Red Dragon. And he's like, are we playing? <laughs> it's like, no, sorry, <laughs> not yet. Uh, also, turn base? What's wrong? Oh, I think he's referring to the campaign. Yeah, the campaign has like turn based elements, then you play battles. It's a bit weird um huh. i don't really play a lot of the campaigns i'll be real um they're cool but they're not my thing I, I i just like skirmish i like fucking around with the decks and playing the game more than the campaign personally but they're there uh here you got your maps um 
ignore the VV, 3v3. I think it means the map is basically designed around 1v1, but you can have 4v4 on this map. <laughs> it's just really stupid. <laughs> well then. Um, me and my friends will quite often play two-player and use like a 4v4 map just because we love the resources you get and the size of the map. Um, you get a bit of a preview here on the right. Uh, basically, you start in your color. So red 4 will start in the red square. Uh, blue, far, blue 4 will start in the blue blue square. Uh, it's not really a square, is it? It's just a polygon. Um, What's with the numbers? The numbers is how many resources that earns per tick. Um, okay. So like this region in the middle, 9, is worth more to your economy than this region out here at the 3s. Uh, these are neutral, so you have to capture these ones in the middle between the two armies. You basically start here. Um, okay. if we look at, um, we're going to try out one sand harbor because it's a good all rounder map and it's small. Um, but basically you start, you start in a region, uh, these lines you see coming into these squares, uh, these are what, what we talked about earlier, the corridors. So here at the red four square, you've got a land corridor and an air corridor. And here at this, uh, number one region over here, you've got a land corridor and a sea corridor. So you can bring in naval units once you capture this the zone over here okay uh by default regions it says red here but it's not just like captured automatically you still have to have a commander in that region if you lose your region like lose your commander in that region uh you don't have corridors anymore so you can't call in new units so your initial starting region you really do want to protect your commander or have two you know even have two uh when we're playing eight, uh, like friendly games we normally just keep it to one but heavily protect them you know? It can only commanders take uh, zones? Yeah, only things with the star. Okay. And if a com say if a commander leaves a zone, would it go back to neutral? or It goes back to neutral, yeah. You lose the region, but uh... then the second east... And also they have to be stationary. Uh, so if you're driving your commander around the zone, um, it will stay neutral. It won't capture until he stops moving. So you really, you really just want to sit them somewhere protected and forget about them. Uh, I like to hide mine yeah. in trees um, and then just protect it with anti-air and infantry screen normally. Gotcha. So here's your map choice. Um, these symbols here next to the 1v1, I think that means like if it's got naval content. So these maps here, they don't have any naval corridors. Uh, there's no navy corridor at all. With this, these ones have naval. This is purely naval corridors. The symbol that's just like water. Uh, this one means there's land and naval. I like Once in Harbor a lot. It's probably the map I learned the most of the game on. So I've got a lot of love for it. Uh, it's a good all-rounder map to learn, honestly. There's a lot of trees, a lot of cities, a lot of sea. Uh, it's got, it's kind of got it all. Um, hey, it's Kavala. Game modes. You basically have different game modes for how the game works. Think of it as any sort of RTS. It's like, you know, your Total Annihilation versus your, you know, like Domination game. Um, a lot of people like playing Conquest, where you secure a zone, you earn points for holding zones, you reach the limit, then the game ends. Uh, I learned the game playing Destruction, where you just need to kill units. Um, and I normally played it originally on Total Destruction, uh, which just basically means I need to completely annihilate them all before I win. Um, gotcha. I like that to learn, just because it gives you a long game, and it also gives you, like, it's a very clear objective, just ruin them. And the economy stuff is secondary. You know, you, you just gotta kill more than they kill you. Um... <laughs> conference this 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 setting here kind of determines i mean it's self-explanatory there but basically confrontation team one plays as blue four jesus christ I, the follow noise always scares the shit out of me um, thank you for the follow <laughs> um confrontation is team one is blue four team two is red four uh this is i think the way the game's kind of intended uh but you can also play both teams of blue four so like if you and a friend want to play like us versus anzac for example you can do that or red four versus red four. Uh, starting points. This is how much money you have at the start um, to basically spend on your army. So we'll start with a low. We'll do total destruction. Uh, this is basically shared through your team, I believe. So if you're playing two v two, you would have two thousand points each to spend. Uh, versus what's this? What's half of fifteen hundred? Brain is failing me. What's that? Seven fifty. Um then time limit again pretty self-explanatory it's just how long you have before the match ends whoever's got the highest points at the end of the time wins if you haven't destroyed them all um let's just go no time limit for this example 
Um, and then the final one, income rate. This is basically how fast the ticks in points. So like if you want to be spawning a lot of units and you want the enemy to spawn a lot of units, uh, you go like higher income rates. Medium's like default. Uh, or you can go lower income rates if you want like a real battle of attrition. Um, and now here, here you have all your slots. So we've got the enemy. It's going to be a, let's just say an easy uh, red force starter deck. You can actually choose what the AI brings. So like if you've made red four decks yourself, you can like make the AI bring it, which is kind of cool. Um, so I have I have these decks called uh, they call me a silly man and Bong Chongsu, which are basically just North Korea infantry span for a cathartic game where I just get to bomb the shit out of infantry. Um, uh, that's my actual armor deck, which is Entente uh, armor. But we'll just we'll just go random. We'll just go random deck. So basically, it's gonna pick a random deck. Um. And it looks like they've chosen North. Oh, you know what? I'll actually I'll use the red four starting deck, and I'll I'll choose the blue four starting deck just for fairness. Uh, you can choose how hard the AI is. AI in this game is predictable but scary. So like on higher difficulties, they're very very aggressive. Um, even on lower difficulties, they're pretty aggressive and. I don't know if they're like smart necessarily they're just like way more units and more effective with them so uh we'll just go easy for now as an example just so then i can actually cope with it while also explaining how the game works um so that, that's this is a very basic kind of game setup but just a really good way to learn you know and let's go so now we'll move on to the next section which is how the actual game works so much like total war um I just need to turn my settings down because I think Dozet's frame rate's dying. Let's go. I slowed the settings a bit just to get a bit of frame rate on my um avatar. Can you still hear me, Lolly? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So m much like Total War, you get like basically a deployment screen. Um, so nothing's nothing started yet until I click launch battle. Um, here you'll see obviously you got your regions and you got your corridors clearly marked. Like land is always going to come along this MSR. Um, air is always going to come out of this side of the map. Uh, sea will come in from this side of the map, but in the sea. Um, and as you can see, it's fucking cool. Like you can go all the way to like satellite view, like way the fuck up here all the way down to like individual fucking trees <laughs> and the game runs pretty well with huge quantities of units it's it's nuts how well it runs um by default the game has said oh you want to use this commander don't you uh it'll always give you a commander at the start uh place automatically in your zone but quite often they're placed really dumb like that's a helicopter commander just in the middle of the fucking road i don't know why um <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna you can't delete this until you've got at least one commander in your zone and as you notice i can't deploy shit anywhere else i can't move this commander anywhere else i can only place him in the blue zone at the start uh we're gonna swap him out we're gonna take a command abrams instead uh and i'm gonna put it in this tr tree line no i'm gonna put him in the back here i'm gonna put him like behind this building like behind this little building how many here. commanders are you allowed to have on the field again uh, as many as your deck can support. They're just really expensive, so you don't want to have too many. You just need at least one per region. Um, Would it be worth having multiple so you can hold multiple zones? It, it is. Um, I like personally to start with uh, one per zone. Like, I've got one per this zone. And then I'm going to try and push and get the C region straight away. So I'm going to place this, he this helicopter commander, like, right here. Like, right on the edge. So he's basically going to take off, fly over here. And then disembark over here somewhere. And we're gonna steal Foxtrot. Um, now, for your home, for your home base, um, do you need to worry about having a commander there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying before, if, even if even though it says blue at the moment, if I move this commander, it will go neutral, and then I won't have access to this land corridor or this air corridor. Ah. Uh, uh, in this in this starting deployment phase, um, everything you spawn comes in immediately where it's placed. Like, when I start the game, this helicopter will be there. 
but normally units will have to like drive or fly in from the corridor they won't just spawn where you put them um you've actually got access to a mini map in the top right corner as well uh as a little note and you've also got access to pings these are just pings for your friends uh like this is the defense ping so if you click somewhere it'll give them a ping and like smoke and say defense and everyone on your team can see that uh there's i think this is support or help yeah help support help defense and attack and then this one's a custom one where you can type like fuck heaps of aa you press enter and then you can like click anywhere and it'll put like a custom ping up really good feature i wish more games had that and only uh only your allies can see that right yeah only your allies um and they they, they last quite a while uh the pings can you delete them at any time uh, i don't think you can delete them but they, they do fade away uh, i think okay. if, i think in this deployment phase they stay for like ever but in the game they fade uh so so back, back to the composition um i'm gonna also take over to foxtrot uh so here's how you place units you can you can go up to here this is your there's so many points i have to spend so i've got 12 20 points remaining to spend on stuff um i click that i get the menu for all the stuff to place um let's say i want to buy one of each jet they're not placed on the map they go into your airport panel down the left here so that's like a special a specialized little like section for jets jets work a little bit differently i'll show you how they work mid-game so i've got one of each jet down there um i'm gonna get two now i could buy I could click this once and buy one squad of light riflemen in a helicopter and as you can see here it's a helicopter like the model's a helicopter but there's a little person icon next to the name uh that's because obviously there's a squad inside it so this helicopter has my commander in it and this helicopter has my infantry squad in it this little square next to uh60 is how many squads are in this like group so I, that's one where if i bought if i click this twice it's two squads but one group so i normally buy infantry and squads of two normally um and tanks as individuals tanks helicopters stuff like that i normally do individuals um a lot of people you can it maxes out at four uh helicopters is always two um i think like vehicles is normally four so you can have like three or four uh, i think there's a control i think if you click control or something it'll max it out um let's say i bought four, four of these into one big squad uh the problem with this is it's like it's a bu bunch of infantry and a bunch of vehicles clustered up so like I personally don't think you should be buying tanks and like squads of four it's very easy to kill them all um there are some commands for like spreading out and stuff much like total war but uh, uh yeah we'll, we'll, we'll experiment we'll, we'll go uh if you just if you just click a unit and press uh backspace delete and i oh right click you right you right click to delete stuff if you don't want to spawn it in um i'm a little rusty i haven't played this in a while so we have here we've got basically we've got a commander staying here in golf uh to hold it we've got a commander and some units that are going to head over to foxtrot to hold that uh and then this this is this is like the garrison square for city blocks so this is how you like garrison infantry into like cities um we're going to build a bit of a front up here in this like factory area uh because the enemy are probably going to come along this main highway and i'm going to play kind of defensively just to uh, give you examples um but uh let's go let's get a bunch of these small guys s'mores are like good against vehicles so i want to have two 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 squads of small guys disembark in these buildings um and then at the back i'm gonna have some anti-air i'm gonna put a flans japard flak panzer japard uh you know what just out in the open here that's a gun and then i'm gonna have like uh radar missile anti-air there and now we're probably just missing some recon uh in these woods over here at the front um now how you tell if something's in cover like woods is if you hover over it if i put if i put him here in the field nothing's happening just uh, just nothing happens if i move him into this forest you'll see the cursor says dense forest in blue there and also the cursor changes to blue 
Uh, see, like, sometimes you can even get cover in these really small tree lines. Uh, like, here's one. No, it doesn't count. Uh, I'm trying to find an example of, like, a really small tree line. This might work. Yep, see, that's a really small tree section, but it's a dense hedged farmland, so it's a little bit of cover. So he'll actually hide there. Um, and the enemy won't be able to see him unless they get closer. Uh, so I'm going to put this LAV scout recon here in this forest at the forest's edge. So he can see all across this whole field out to that town. Uh, and he's basically going to be my spotter for like anti-air and shit as well. And then I might put another recon like here as like a backup. And then I might bring one with me. Oh, you know what? I'll bring a recon helicopter to scout it at the start of the game. Can uh, infantry like uh, garrison buildings and shit? Yeah, yeah. I'll show you that once the game starts. Um, cool. And we're going to have a quick reaction force of cobras. Uh, just kind of here at the back. So I'll, I'll, I'll take off and go into battle with them if I need to. And that, that oh, you know what? I'm going to support the front line with one heavy tank because I've got, I've got a little bit of money left. Um, I don't like to spend all my money at the start personally, but that's personal preference and playstyle. Um, I'm gonna put this tank like here on this road. So basically he's got a little bit of cover on the left and right And then he's got a nice big open road to just fire down uh, You always want to point the front of your tank towards the enemy because it's only the hardest armor Makes sense and that's that's the game so Let's go So as you can see all my units have spawned in and Because yep. I have a commander in goal. I have goal. It's blue it means I can spawn in units as you'll see up here, a little plus three has appeared. Meaning that's how much money I'm getting per tick. That's my money pool. So, at the moment, it's pretty slow. So, let's send these guys over to Foxtrot. So, helicopters will take off and fly. If you zoom in, they can, you actually goes to the follow camera. Which is pretty cool. And as you can see, those little uh, M113s are zooming along. I'm assuming uh, units auto fire and shit. There's no attack move command yep, or anything. The, they just do on the, their own. The, there's an attack move. So there's an attack move down here. So Q. So if I go Q with this squad, they would move their and light people up. They will. They will still defend themselves without doing that. But I like to attack move with stuff like helicopters and shit. Um, now these units down here, these haven't disembarked yet. So you wanna you wanna go down here to unload or you press U. So you press the U hotkey. Infantry will automatically, if they're in a zone, will automatically garrison the buildings. Now now you will notice as well, the infantry and the vehicles are two separate units now. So now that the infantry are disembarked, I can actually pull back the, the transports. Uh, and this squad here will also unload. So now I've got, now I've got some anti-tank teams in these buildings. Let me move this tank board a little bit. And we're going to take this recon helicopter off. Already you can see my recon has spotted an enemy helicopter over there. It's not doing a whole lot yet though. Set a new observation post there. Now I want this commander to probably garrison that building there. So I'm going to go... Now you can also queue up orders. So I'm going to right click there. But then I'm also going to hold shift and click unload. What that does is it means the helicopter is going to go over there and then land and then unload all in one. Now you will notice my recon son to pick up some enemy units coming in. Thick and fast. And they're engaging yeah. my helicopter. Can commander units uh, garrison? Yeah, if they're infantry. Okay, okay cool. This is a bit of a fucking fight here between my helicopter and their helicopter. Uh, my helicopter is severely outmatched, but my anti-air is firing at their helicopter. And they've stunned it, so they've hurt it. And second rocket's coming in. Miss. And boom. There we go. Kill. Uh, Fox. We have now lost Foxtrot, because my commander was moving. I'm going to garrison him in there. So now we have Foxtrot. So now I could theoretically buy naval units. Now you might notice this keeps going grey and blue. That's probably because yeah. they also have a commander in Foxtrot. So this is the problem. If you both have equal quantities of commanders, it'll go neutral. So they've got a commander in here somewhere that keep moving around. 
Because my commander is sitting here static. Hmm. Now, if we look at here, things are not going great. They're moving in pretty heavy with a bunch of tanks, and my tank is dead. <laughs> my infantry and the squads, though, uh, seem to be killing their vehicles pretty fast as well. Okay. So as you can tell, it's becoming a bit of a fucking firefight for the fate of uh, golf over here. God, I'm so sick of Foxtrot. There we go. So there's their commander there. He's stupidly just... There you go. I lost eyes on him, so he disappears. This is why recon is so important. <laughs> we'll move that infantry there. Put this infantry there. Commander dead. Just killed their commander. <laughs> so now now Foxtrot is mine. For real. Uh, because I have it, I'm going to spawn in some big boats. Um, because I now have a naval, naval corridor. Uh, there's a Tunguska, by the way. Just driving around being an arsehole. As you can see, he kind of slipped away into the town, so now I have no idea where he is. Here, my boats have come in from the naval corridor, and they're driving in. As you can probably tell immediately, while this is a 1v1 map, it's still pretty big. And uh, there's still a lot going on. Just a lot at all times. It's just, it's a very busy <laughs> game. Um, it takes experience to kind of like not... Okay, here we go. Here's a good example of what uh, my friend was talking about. So this is this is supply. So this small unit here, the squatter guys, they're calm. They're okay. But they've only got four small rockets left. If you look in the bottom, if I select them and look at the bottom, you've got four out of 20 small rockets left. They're almost out of ammo, and they've been doing all the hard work keeping enemy vehicles out of my fucking town. So I need to resupply these guys. Um, and the best way to do that is cargo truck. So I'm going to send this cargo truck up, and I'm going to put them behind this warehouse. Because they have like a radius of supply. Um, and he's going to drive up and give them more ammo. So he's going to come in from the land corridor now, because it's not the game is live now. So he's spawned in, and now he's driving there. Rapidly. <laughs> And basically he'll stop and then he's got uh, i've got ammunition turned on fuel turned on and spare parts turned on so he'll basically resupply anyone with that stuff um just to save uh supplies for just ammo i'm gonna just turn ammunition on and leave the other two off uh but he's and he basically hopefully will get there without getting destroyed uh this this squad is taking some losses they're down to five guys left and they killed my supply truck which was filled with ammunition, so it blew up quite severely. Uh, so these guys did not get a resupply. And they're still sending in a lot of units. I don't know what they are. Looks like tanks and anti-air. And I can see the helicopter. So this squad's probably pretty fucking doomed, to be honest. Um, I could pull them back and run away. So infantry can kind of like hop between buildings really quickly. Um... They can snap, like, every couple of seconds, they can, like, get out of a building and then snap. Uh, but then if you run out into, like, an open field, they'll, like, leave the building and then become, like, an actual foot unit. And as you can see, okay. it's, it's, like, two guys left. You know, there's fuck all guys in the squad. Um, if you resupply them, though, they can go back up to full numbers. Okay, so resupply replenishes their numbers then, too. Yeah. So let's go... Let's bring a truck here. Uh... To resupply these guys once they get back here. Uh, how's how's this area going? So my ship is engaging in like a small vehicle. <laughs> it was hiding between two trucks. Like an arsehole. And my ship my ship's having a bad time with it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask, uh, can uh, ships do naval bombardments? It looks like they can. Yeah, so he's got this uh, 40 mil Bofors gun. He's just lighting them up. But as you can see, every single weapon in this game has ammunition counts. So like every shot this this vehicle's making, it's it's taking from its ammunition. So he really No, he's kept, he's basically pinned him. Just stunned and red. Oh, there we go, he's dead. Killed. So I finally got him. I've set up a new command post there. Now this hind is being a real asshole. 
So what I'm going to actually do is bring in this, uh, I'm going to bring in this, this jet. So how jets work is you basically choose the jet you want, and then you can either fire on a position. Uh, let's, let's do a napalm strike. Just, I'm just going to bomb this rover with napalm. So this jet, I'm going to use the fire position. Jets just fly in from the, from the air corridor. Oh, they have anti-air. He's dead. God damn it. But he actually did drop his napalm in time. But I lost that jet. And now you see it's not appearing in the airport window. That's because the jet is dead. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, this jet, I'm going to try and kill this helicopter with. This is probably a dumb tactical decision because I know there's anti-air around here somewhere. Around here somewhere. And these jets. Jets aren't the best for engaging helicopters. I don't think. Uh, they're just, they're better for, they're just not very good at it. <laughs> they just seem to I like, they have to get too close, I think. Uh. And see like that, they'll, they'll like overshoot the target because they're too, they're too fast. So like, he hit him, load. but he didn't kill him. Split loads in a pilot seat, you'll get him from far. And see that time, he just completely missed with the anti-air rocket. And now he's almost out of anti-air rockets and just has the Mauser like auto cannon left. And there's anti-air. Now, if you do see anti-air, and you're like, oh, fuck, you can click evac, and the and the jet will fly out of the map. Okay. What, resupply out of the map, too? Yeah, yeah. You'll, I'll show you in a second. When he's in the airport window, you'll see this fuel icon and the ammo icon. So this, this jet is now on, like, cooldown until he's resupplied and refueled. Uh, I've lost everything in golf, by the way, apart from the command tank. Oh. So, like, if you were panicking, you could just be like, uh, tanks, uh, tanks, um, fuck, uh, anti air, uh, 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 I'm suddenly running out of money, uh, Mistral. Uh, Commander's dead. So, I've lost that region now. But these guys spawned in on time. But at three tanks and one anti air unit probably is not enough to fight what's in here. So if I just attack move, these tanks will try and do their best. Um, Anti-air has killed two of the helos. Like, they're doing alright. But now I have no way to bring in new commanders to take back golf. So to, if I wanted golf back, I would have to either buy a commander over here, or send this commander over himself. Um, it would be a dumb idea to move this commander when I actually have a land corridor over here though. So what I'd do, theoretically, is I'd save up enough and buy a new commander over in Foxtrot. And then take him over to golf to recapture it. With adequate support, you know. Uh, now that I don't have an air corridor, you'll also notice the airport is greyed out. Basically because I have no air corridor right now, uh, like, since golf was captured, I can't bring in my jets. So those jets are still there. I still own those jets. But um, they're not available. And the enemy has Bravo, Alpha, and Charlie. So they're earning a lot more money than me. I'm earning one, one. Now they have three commanders. I've got thirty-five money, and I'm only earning one every tick. So I, I'm fucked. Like these commanders are boats, so they can't get to these regions. Um, but I can at least race some hell. You know what? Actually, I'm just gonna take order over there. Uh, things are looking pretty grim, but you can still come back from this. You just need to use your units really effectively. You know, these guys. I might, I might link up my forces. Um, now, something important to note as well is the move fast command. Um, move fast will force your guys to go as fast as possible to the destination. What that actually means is they'll follow roads. Uh, units travel way faster on roads. So if you just right click somewhere, like if I want them to go over here and I right click, this unit will go across country. If I use this unit and go move fast and then click over here, he will actually follow the quickest possible route using roads. So he'll probably actually get there first because he'll go. But the problem is he's going to drive up here through enemy territory and then probably cut across like here. So you know what I mean? Like it's not necessarily the best option all the time. It's very useful for getting from the back though to the front. You want to move fast. Uh, these tanks are obviously having a real bad time. Because there's a fucking hind over there just being an asshole. Now you're starting to see how useful anti-air is. 
Uh, this anti-air is right there, but he's got no missiles left. Hence the little no missiles icon next to his name. Yeah. Uh, these need repairs. One of the tracks is broken on one of these tanks. Things are just bad. Things are just real bad right now. <laughs> this guy's driving desperately, trying to avoid all the fucking MI-25 shooting at him. And he's finally dead. <laughs> the tanks are driving as fast as they can away from that combat zone. But uh, it's not going great. <laughs> so I can have like a really good deck in the deck section. And then, you know, it's all about how you play with that deck, to be honest. Um, over here, technically, uh, I could just send these infantry to garrison this building here. And then they should be able to kill that Strayler really easily. Because infantry always have normally like machine, uh, like assault rifles or battle rifles, uh, then anti tank rockets and light machine guns. So infantry are kind of pretty useful against everything. Okay. So they've garrisoned that building and they've just killed that trailer using one of their PZF 44s. So, great. But I seem to have still got the MI 25s hunting my tanks <laughs> with impunity. So because there's so many tanks, I'm going to actually call in one of these over here, ready for them to turn up. And I'm actually going to buy a recon unit next to him as well. So I've still got a land corridor over here. So let's just assume golf is, golf is overrun. We don't have golf anymore, basically. Um, how would I turn this game around? Well, firstly, we need to get rid of the air superiority. I've got way too many helicopters able to just ruin my day. So that's the, that's the first... Um... That's kind of the first goal, is to basically get this Black, Black Panzer Japard into the battle zone to just lay down some hate. Uh, if you hover over enemies, you can see their effective range. So this, that, that, um, this line here, that is in range. That is not. So these, these don't have the greatest range, um, in the world in terms of, like, land to land. They're a lot better against air, uh, hence why they're anti-air. Uh, I'm going to put them in this little courtyard over here. It's weird, like, clearing. And they've got some tanks coming down. So they've got some tanks coming down the road, but I still have my three, my four tanks here. Which are laying down the height. <laughs> and they're sending pretty trash tanks at me. They're sending T-34s. But, uh, oh, there, there we go. So that anti-air unit is just lighting the fuck out of that vehicle. <laughs> And, yeah, it's just a bit of a shit show, honestly. It's hard to, like, almost explain what's happening in, like, a moment-to-moment -moment basis. But basically, they've got tanks. They've got some tanks here. Uh, and, like, anti-tank units. A lot of vehicles in my zone. Uh, my infantry are fighting them off. Um, now it's infantry-to-infantry -infantry combat over these warehouses. You can tell because Mott shots in are an infantry unit. Uh, Anti-air is engaging that helicopter when it can see it uh lav scout probably needs to join the anti-air uh the nanayon shiki e are like my tanks i'm gonna pull them up there you can hold the right mouse button by the way to like drag out formations to get like proper facing you can also reverse units so the tanks will drive backwards so they'll always have their front face the enemy while retreating i quite like using reverse with tanks uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of nuance. <laughs> this anti air unit is just lighting that guy up, <laughs> but he's now out of ammo and he's panicked, which is bad. Uh, I'm gonna pull it pull it back over there and send a truck to like there. Actually, that might be a bad idea because that's right next to my commander and he's a, he's very explosive, full of ammo and stuff. Yeah, basically, basically the war for the docks has gone real crazy. Uh, there's some infantry moving in through these trees. Oh no, it's not infantry. It's... They really want their Amazon packages. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a fucking Buratino I was talking about. So, Napalm Rocket Artillery. Oh. As you can tell, it's a real bad fucking time for everything in that area. 
here. Uh, it ruins morale and it will kill infantry like fucking anything. Um, not as effective against like tanks, but they still will die if you leave them in the napalm for too long. Well, I might as well eventually, I'm pretty sure it burn shit. Or at least cook everyone inside. So at this point, I would probably say this game's basically lost. Um, while I've killed more than them, like if you look in the right panel here, I've got 2020 points, they've only got 1410. Like I've been killing more than they've been killing of me. Um, tactically, they have more locations than me. I'm on the back foot. Everything I have gets killed. Um, this for me would be like, this is either a real uphill battle or a loss. <laughs> Um, I can buy like one tank right now, which I might, because almost all their units are light-skinned APCs and some shit tanks. Would you, are you like able, is it possible to deck someone out? Yeah, absolutely. So I wouldn't say it's a complete loss, and you can just deck them out if you keep up those killing. Yeah, but the, the problem is their decks are very big. <laughs> ah, I see. See, this tank can engage, can technically engage that helicopter with his machine gun the m2 browning but they're really not very good at it that, that helicopter's having a bad time so like you know you know it's desperate when the tank has to fight the helicopter yeah and also he's also fighting other tanks and they might kill him he's down to like half health are uh, these little blue bars down the bottom left here these are like your health per unit okay it's basically down to the ships and the tanks and some holdouts, like the commander's holding out. But the commander squad's down to two guys Ooh. and no LNG ammo. One go, commander's dead. Sorry. So that's oh. that's Foxtrot gone. So I've, I've basically lost. I would have to beat their entire army with these two ships, a transport helicopter, and a tank. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't spawn in any new commanders apart from these two. Um, and these two don't have anything to capture because everything else is landlocked. Uh, that's landlocked, technically. That's landlocked, technically. And then these are all landlocked. Uh, I could try and get a Fremantle up the river, but I doubt that's going to happen with that bridge. <laughs> but I could maybe try and take Echo with a Fremantle, but I doubt it. So the ships are the ships are making a bloody good go of it, but um, unfortunately, this is kind of down to the wire. Oh, tanks dead, <laughs> killed by some infantry, and this transport helicopter has a machine gun, so I'm, I'm, I might as well just take off and support. It's probably gonna die immediately. Yeah, there's some sort of APC right there. It's dead already. The ship, this ship's almost dead, it's down to one health bar. Um, and this ship over here has still got pretty good health, but it's almost dead. That ship's dead. Uh, the explosion damaged this ship really badly. As you can see, this is on easy. Like, even on easy, the AI can be quite aggressive. Yeah, I'll see. And I think that's probably the reason this game can be daunting for a lot of people, is there's a lot of depth, and the AI is pretty challenging, and there's not really a dedicated tutorial, so like... I get it. I get why people don't get into it, but if you put it in the time and you you, you, you really like modern military combat and real time strategy, it's there's nothing really like it. It's great. I um I always think this game would be amazing for forty k, like being able to buy like space marines with like different transport oh, shit, options. Yeah. Like yeah, drop fucking dope. Like if you could buy them in a rhino, buy them in a raceback, buy them in a land raider, buy them in a drop pod, for example. Or like guard, you could buy them in like a Chimera or a Torox or like a Valkyrie. Um, but unfortunately, Eugen haven't released modding tools for this, and so far all you can do is edit stats. You can't add models, as far as I know. So, Eugen, if you ever see this fucking stream or video, add mod support. We would love it. We love your game as a platform, not just the game as it is. War game, forty k. Yeah. So as you can see, pretty shit game by me. But um, twenty two minutes uh i didn't win uh my losses by the end were actually more than theirs my kills were less as well 
uh, and I earned way less command points. Command points, I think, is a combination of like logistics and zones. Um, and there's a bit more detail stats. Like, this here is quite cool. It tells you what units killed what. So, like, this small unit, the squad of small guys, killed, like, a T-55, a bunch of APCs, some infantry, and, like, a recon um, jeep thing. Uh, this small unit killed T-64, T-55, some infantry. One ship killed a recon helicopter and some sort of, like, light-skinned APC. Um, but o overall, every unit only killed, like, a couple of things before they died. Some units only killed one thing before they died or none at all. Okay. Here we go. It tells you, like, what everything died to. So this cargo truck was the one we saw at the start that got killed by T-55. Um... My Challenger got killed by a T-64. Uh, recon helicopter killed by another helicopter. Like, Oh. Um, can units gain, like, veterancy and whatnot between games and shit? Not between games, sadly. That'd be quite cool. Uh, I think in campaign, maybe. But um, in skirmish, no. Your deck's just... You're starting veterancy, and then they can earn veterancy in-game. So, like, by the end of, like, a two-hour game, they might be significantly higher ranked if they've done really well. I've had tanks that went from, like the lowest tier to like the highest tier in one game just because they held I, a road really well i can imagine i can now imagine conscripts like what you know the fuck ton amount of troopers suddenly become elite that'd probably be scary also with the scale of this game how good would titans be oh yeah fuck yeah like i i, I i'm just really like i honestly think it's like one of the best platforms for a strategy game and i think it'd be amazing if they had that uh let's try a bigger crazy big map just to show you kind of the scale of it um i don't want to go my airborne us deck uh let's go easy again no i'm not gonna play this out as detailed as i did the last one but i'm just gonna show you like the size of the maps gotcha so this one's got you know this one's got proper c regions so like papa you can only capture with a c commander um, and the same, go same goes for Alpha. Uh, Kilo's weird. Like, you technically have, like, beach and land. So you theoretically, you know, get a commander in by sea and then capture it. Um, bunch of corridors. So you get air and land on the, on the starting zones. Then you get land and sea on Oscar. And then on Kilo, you get just sea. So there's, like, a bunch of different corridor options for where your unit's coming from. Um... The, the mission is split by the islands converging here in the middle. And obviously big ships can't cross from side to side. So like if you spawned a big ship over like here near Delta, you'd basically be stuck to like this side of the ocean. Uh, so there's a lot of technical considerations. This is a really fun map in multiplayer with like your friends. Like you and three friends versus the AI or the enemies. Um, here's a fob by the way. So on this deck I actually have a fob. So fobs are stationary, as I said at the start. They're just a base. Um, so okay. where, where you place it in your zone is where it's going to be forever. Uh, does this deck have two? It does. So this deck actually has two fobs. Um, so I'm going to place one there and one like here. So once once they're down, they're down forever. They're very tough. They're very hard to kill um, without like concentrated artillery or bombing. Uh, but they're very easy to capture, so you still want to protect them. And then I'm going to put my commander like... Do, uh, okay. I'm assuming they count yeah. as commanders. No, they don't. <laughs> oh. You still need a commander. Ah. Uh, Depends why I've got that Huey there. Uh, as you can see, so, we have so a lot it's more pretty much just just a stationary resupply. Like, what's the big significance of FOBs then? Uh, it's a stationary resupply. So if you have trucks that don't okay. die in combat, like mine did, um, you can send your trucks up to the front, resupply a tank or whatever. Then come back to the fob to get more supply because the truck runs out of supply as well. And I'm guessing uh, without a fob, so you have to evac trucks before they can get more supply or something. Yeah. No, no, gotcha. I, no, no. Wait, if you don't have fobs, you can't resupply the trucks. The trucks just run out forever. You should resupply uh... them with like another truck, <laughs> but there's not much point. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, like in this deck, it's all airborne based, so it's mainly helos. Um, so I don't have any trucks. I just have giant supply helos. So basically, I'll be sending these up to the front, resupplying the guys, and then flying them back to the fobs to fill up again. Uh, that's what this little yellow bar is. That's supply. 
So trucks, helos, and fobs will have that little yellow bar, which basically represents how full they are of supply. And supply is a mix of like fuel, ammo, and repair. It's it kind of represents. It's like an abstract. It's it's just supply inverted commas. Um, this deck has a lot more jets, <laughs> as you can see. I have uh, aardvarks for bombing, three hundred forty kilo bombs. I got cluster bombs, two hundred forty five kilos. I got a nighthawk. So, like, literally a stealth bomber with paveway GBUs. Uh, air superiority F-16s. Napalm Phantoms. Uh, Do-it-all Hornets. Uh, A-10 Thunderbolts. You know, the fucking brrrr. And, um, finally a Raven, which is... This is this is the specialized ones I was telling you about. The Seed. So, th this is for hunting down Tunguskers. Um, you can tell because it's got anti-radar missiles and it's got that weird E infinity symbol W symbol. So it's like an anti 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 air anti jet. Fuck, how do you say it? <laughs> it's called seed anyway in real life, but I don't know what the fuck you call it in this. Anti radar jet. Um, fuck all vehicles. I just got fourteen tow Humvees. Um, lots of nice helicopters though. Four Apaches, four Super Cobras, three uh, fucking like heavy Blackhawks, um, and like 16 Heavy Hogs, which are just Hueys with a bunch of rockets, and uh, 40 Mike Mikes. Uh, America gets some of the best uh, recon helicopters in the world. Um, the fucking Apache Longbow is basically a recon chopper that's as effective as an attack chopper. Um, it carries 16 anti-tank missiles and has a fucking 30 mil autocannon thing. Um, so this is quite a scary recon option. Very useful. It can kind of dual roll where it recons but also can take out tanks quite easily. Uh, pretty light tanks in this deck because it's airborne. So I don't have any Abrams or anything heavy. I've just got like Sheridans and the M8. Uh, support. I've got almost no anti-air, su supplied by uh, ground at least. All my anti-air is in my jets. Um, my anti-air in this deck is, in the, in the vehicle section, is just a Humvee with stinger missiles, basically. I do have 14 of those, though, so, you know, they're alright. They're pretty shit, though. Um, and then all my infantry comes in on helicopters. So my infantry are basically anti-air, infantry and Hueys, a bunch of anti-air, uh, a bunch of generic riflemen and Blackhawks, and... A bit of Delta Force coming in on Chinooks. Uh, so this is this is a very like fast moving uh, deck. I normally like to play this deck in uh, in conjunction with friends. This is more my like bombing deck where I just I basically spend all my money on jets. Um, Speed. And then I support with infantry. Uh, as you'll notice though, you can only ever have nine jets at once in your airport. Uh, this hmm. is kind of a sad limitation. Uh, I, I, I don't know why. I guess just because it would be fucking broken if you could have all your jets at once. Um, but basically, until these die, as far as I can tell, there's no way to get rid of them out of your airport to buy different jets. So when you're okay. buying jets, be careful with what you buy. <laughs> like right now, I bought all those and I don't have access to... Uh... Is there any I missed? Yeah, I, I didn't buy any uh... Phantoms. So I've got no... Oh no, I did. I bought one. Uh, anyway... Let's say I bought nothing but, like, anti-air jets. I wouldn't be able to buy any more bombers right now. Gotcha. So, yeah. I mean, I think that kind of covers it. Um, did you have any questions? Or did anyone, uh... in the chat, anyone in the chat have any questions? Let's take a look at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Why keep going on about light skins? <laughs> Eyeball emoji. Um, cause there's too many light skins in my damn war game. <laughs> Bo Chong's the man, they keep coming. Uh, I guess like little technical pointers. Um, how am I going? I'm going good, thank you, Bushrock. Um, I liked your deck, by the way. I don't know if you saw earlier, but we imported your college, uh, your Commonwealth deck and had a look. Uh, and it was, it was oh, nice. your dick, by the way. Go through. 20, <laughs> uh, 21. God damn it, D-Secret. Banned. Banned immediately. I don't want to become famous. I want to die alone. <laughs> Banned. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm real like heavy on the ban hammer for those fucking spammers. They always do it. Uh, and I ban them immediately. So my fucking chat rules don't talk to me about becoming famous or buying clicks or whatever. <laughs> You got a great cold war dick, the bull, bullfrog, uh, bullfrog, bullfrog. Uh, oh, Eyeball oh. emoji. Saying I have a great cold war dick for war game red dragon though is like, isn't that redundant? The whole thing's like <laughs> set in the cold war. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, let's just play, and I'll show. I'll just show you some of these jets because they're fun. Uh, like the Raven, this jet I just used to like find their anti air, so I'm just gonna send him on a mission. Uh, I micro these rather than just like give them a position to fire on. Basically, if he's doing his job, you'll see Tunguskas and shit pop up on the map because he can see the radar. So I'm betting, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure the enemy would have bought some. There we go. So Tunguska, and he's firing, and missed the first shot, and killed it. And now, now that he's out of ammo, he's e backing um, automatically, because he's out of his anti air radar missiles, and he got away before getting shot down by the anti air jet. But very quickly, they scrambled another jet to try and kill him. <laughs> uh, so now I will counter by sending in my anti air jet. Two of them. So you can hold a, you can hold control to select multiple units. Uh, they give you these nice big name blocks. So in this game, it's really easy to click like units, which I fucking love. Again, it's like kind of one of the best real-time strategy games for a lot of reasons. Um, I'm not seeing any anti-air jets now. They probably evac pretty quick. So um, I'm going to evac as well. Because there's no point having jets over the AO if you don't uh like yeah. kind of no you, a you don't know what's in here so they could have tungusk another tunguska moving up and b it's like i don't want to just leave them sitting ducks for their jets to come and kill yeah i want to have the advantage so i'd rather have those jets on standby in the airport um things like aardvarks and shit i use these differently i like use the fire pause position like fire position and click somewhere on the map and then let go um basically the aardvark will come in he'll drop all his bombs on what you specified um, you want to give them enough room to do it too, if, and he'll drop all his bombs, and he's bugged out already because he's out of ammo, and then boom. So, that's 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 the ease of use of bombs, uh, like bombers. Uh, the Nighthawk, for example, is a bit weird. Like you can just fire position, but these are like laser guarded bombs, so you can actually drop them on, on like a particular target. So if you see like a tank, you can actually like right click that tank, and the bombs will actually like seek that tank. Um, but you can use it like a conventional bomber as well. They're pretty effective against like heavy tanks. Um, A-10 again is a bit more of a direct fire weaponry. You kind of want to like find something and target it with these. Uh, down the bottom left you'll see here is the fuel stat. Oh, sorry, Dozy is right in the way. Um, bottom left under here though there's a fuel stat that counts down with like jets and stuff. Um, you'll normally bug out before you run out though, and if they do run out, they won't just crash. They'll fly out of the map to refuel, so you don't need to, okay. you don't need to worry about it too much. So basically, the fuel access or timer within the AL rather than oh yeah. god, I run out, mayday, mayday. Yeah, like if I select the zone over here, right, and just let go of the A10, um, he he'll just circle that area. And effectively just stay on standby until he runs out of fuel or gets shot down. Um, I don't like to do this with jets. I think it's a very easy way for the enemy to fucking punish you for doing so. Um, yeah. And quite often the AI of your units is too dumb to engage shit. Um, I like to take more direct control over jets and helicopters. Um, so I, control. I would recommend if you don't have like a thing to do with the jet, get them out of there. Just pull them out. There's not much point in them being there. Jets are so fucking fast that even like only on the biggest maps like this one does it take a while for the jet to like get to the combat zone if it's like way over here for example. Um, and nine times out of ten scenarios, there's no there's no point like leaving jet flying over the area unless you have absolute 
dominance. Like, you know they have no AA left. Which is a very rare situation. Um, as you can see, those three jets down the bottom of my airport panel are on cooldown. Uh, that one's repairing. That one's refueling. That one's rearming. Uh, Nighthawk's about available almost. That's going to go available in a second. Yep, so like, now, now I have those two available again. Uh, repairs take longer. This, this is because that Raven actually took some shots from their anti-air jets and their anti-air uh, ground units. Um, so just bear that in mind. The less you get shot, the, the quicker you'll have access to the unit again. Hence why you want to evac like, pretty aggressively if you're worried about them getting hurt. Uh, they've obviously captured Oscar now as well. So now they've got access to a sea corridor and another land corridor. So they can bring units in from over there or from over here. And on a map this big, you want as many corridors as possible to give you tactical options. Um, I will I will go and capture a zone just to show you something kind of cool. Uh, with how corridors work. Actually, no, that's a bad zone for it. So it's just a sea corridor. So I've just basically uh, moved them over here. And then I've shift left clip land. So once he does the move order over here, he's then also going to land in one movement without me having to do it manually. Um, the reason I do that is because I know the commander has to land and be motionless for the capture to work, basically. Like, helicopter commanders can't just, like, sit over the zone and capture it. They have to land. Think of it as, like, setting up the radios or whatever. Like, I don't know how you want to, like, rationalize it, but they can't just, like, mobile capture zones. Gotcha. So, I mean, this is a very, this is very dumb. Like, like, I'm basically just flying him completely unprotected across a huge area. Uh, this is a very quick way in multiplayer to get your commander shot down. <laughs> Someone need a guardian angel? Alt key for hot key units. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I know you can press, like, control one, like in most RTSs. Yeah. And then press like one and it'll go back to that unit. I guess it's alt and then one and shit. Yeah, I'm using control on mine. Maybe maybe it's different. Or maybe it's something try different. Alt. Yeah, I'm trying alt. It's not uh, alt two. Two? No. Alt two? No. I don't know what that does. Uh Bushrog, if you if you've got some hotkey tips, please feel free to elaborate. Oh, it's control. Okay, yeah, yeah no. It, it, it is what I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So if you, so that's a good, that's a good example. So like, for example, if you want to bind both these jets onto Control Two, something going on over here. Let's just bomb that. Should probably bring in some land, to be honest. So there's something in those trees. So they just got fifty-five points. So <laughs> killed something. <laughs> uh, but also lost one of the jets so not i'm not I'm, this is not obviously how you should play the game this is just uh um this is just like an example so now that i've got these two zones these two land corridors if i buy like a tank unit it'll choose as you can see here depending on where i call in the unit it'll pick the closest corridor so if i want to go to hotel it's going to come from this golf corridor or if i go to charlie it'll come from this delta corridor Okay. So it's it's automatic, and the arrow kind of shows you which corridor it's coming from, but it's really uh it's really good. Um, also this unit is amphibious, so also apparently it can come from the sea corridor. Um, but uh, Interesting. or at least it comes in on like a landing craft. But yeah, it's like it's a really versatile game, and like it's it's pretty intuitive. It's just a lot of shit to learn. Like right now, there's some infantry and the fucking trees coming out at me. The classic Go Chongzi. <laughs> they're now dead they're ne oh my god so they're having a good time just ruining my life with jets and helicopters again <laughs> um and yeah yeah uh, as um as bushfrog said basically the control the control hotkeys are very useful for uh, artillery so like if you're in the middle of the battle and you don't want to have to like go back to your back line to grab your artillery to like attack 
you could just bind them to like two or something press two and then go fire position here and not have to move the camera away from whatever you're doing uh, i should just give an example of that because it's probably oh, i don't really i don't know if i have anything that's gonna do that unfortunately because of uh ye old um airborne deck i'll bring in some longbows though and do it with them so the long the longbow is amazing i really like it it's a uh, Anti-tank, anti-infantry powerhouse. It's also really good recon. Um, so let's bind these two to control... Control 1. And let's say I'm using these tanks. And then I go... Oh shit, there's something over here. I can go... 1. Fire position. And then I'll use the longbows. To like bring them in. I personally don't really use helicopters like that. But that's an option. Oh god, they're jets. No! Please! I beg you! So they just dropped a bunch of fucking... Yep. <laughs> so again, the importance of anti-air. They just flew three bombing jets. Oh, here's anti-air jets as well. <laughs> There's one of the longbows are done. But now I'm going to hunt them. So let's, let's get these jets with my jets. So let's dogfight them a little bit. So I'm punishing them for trying to pretend they can come at me. So my jet, my jet's just shot down one of them, and he's going to shoot down the other one. Got him. <laughs> and then evac again. So that's 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 the power of air superiority fighters. If you get behind them with your jets, you can just absolutely ruin them. <laughs> That'll punish them. And now I'm going to send in the Nighthawk on these T-55s. So like, as you can see, air is incredibly powerful if they don't have anti-air. See ya! Uh, thunder, the, the, the Thunderbolt is like an anti-tank fucking it's designed for this. So, let's just get this Merit boy in. One tank dead. Two tanks dead. Three tanks dead. Four tanks dead. And he's out. Oh, anti though. Ah, no! My boy! My sweet boy! He made it out. So I hope that gives you kind of an overview of how the game works, what each unit kind of does, but honestly the rest from here is experimentation. Just playing it, having fun with it, playing with friends, getting a feel for it, going, what the fuck am I doing wrong? And getting help. Um, there's an amazing, there's a really good Steam guide for the game. That's where I basically got all my tips from. Um, but it's like 200 pages and basically says a lot of what I've said in that format. Um... It's really detailed and incredibly good, though. Uh, it completely changed the way I play, and I think I'm a much better player for it. But that being said, it is the kind of game you can play how you want to play. So I'm not going to say, like, you have to do it this way. This is just, like, the noob's guide to, like, the basics. Um, and again, because of deck variety, there's a lot of choices. Game with viewer. Potentially, potentially. Um, I'm still playing now. Uh, Loli, you... Have you got it installed? Yeah. Would you guys want to do a co-op game with with uh, maybe Bushrog? Alrighty. Uh, I might have time for uh, at least one game because I do need to fix my sleep schedule. Now. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. It's late for you. Um, if you if you start the game and need to leave early, I think we get your like uh, we get access to your units and our decks, so you can leave like midway through. Gotcha. Honestly, I might just make a deck and then head to bed. All right. That's fair. Let's see. All right. In that case, then, um, uh, you make a deck and I will uh, maybe play a game with Bushfrog. Oh, my mate's free as well. Yeah, if you're, um, if you're free, uh, free, large dick, huge IQ, <laughs> um, <laughs> feel free to join. Uh, I'll make a, I'll make a match. Uh, we'll do 3v3, uh, private, uh, we'll call it, uh, no Z tutorial stream game, uh, no restrictions, um, oh wait, you know what, I probably need to make it public, don't I? Can I set a password in public? Let's see. Apparently not. Is there a way to just make like a... 
Oh, I can give I can give both uh, I can give an invite code, can I? Uh, pro. So, Brock, try make a new account. What's the difference between login and play your name? Uh, let me have a look. Uh, I have Dozer as like my in-game name, but I think my account's under something different. Uh, gotcha. It's down here, I think. Hmm. Yeah, you have like a nickname option you can change. Oh, actually, I'll change that now. Does it? Um. I'm assuming. I'm assuming like. One of them is in game. One of them is like your overall account name. I don't know. I don't know which is which. Sorry. Gotcha. Oh, well, I'll just use the same for both. Why not? Let's go private three v three. Uh, Dozy. Tutorial stream game. Um, we're gonna play on the same side. Bullfrog. Uh, sorry. I keep saying bull. I'm so sorry, Bullfrog. It's just fucking habit at this point. Um, I'm going to. We're gonna do three v three. Versus AI, if it's okay with you. It's probably not the most exciting, but just for the purpose of the tutorial, I don't want any, like, crazy fucking <laughs> multiplayer combat stuff. Because multiplayer is another fucking level. Like, it's a bit of a trip. Um, artillery and jets become much more important with how you use them. Um, people can do some really weird shit, like uh, helicopter rushes. Where you basically just swarm the enemy's base with a massive pack of anti-everything um, helicopters. Uh, which, for a new player, can be incredibly like, oh, what the fuck do I do? Um, unless you're ready for it with just a bunch of anti-air or uh, hard counters. Uh, it's not super fun. Um, uh, also, Bushfrog, do you normally play Red 4 or Blue 4? Because I prefer to probably do Blue 4 uh, for this example. Again, not trying to limit too much, but your other deck was... Uh, Commonwealth, so I'm assuming you're used to Blue 4. Um, but we'll do Blue 4 versus Red 4. And we'll do Total Destruction. Just again, to just make it, like... Uh, we'll do High Income, though. Um, just to kind of make it just a very simple introduction map. Like, not complicated. Uh, and then I'll give you an invite code. Alright, there's the invite code um, on the screen, but I'll put it in the chat. Uh, and then I'll invite my mate as well. Um, and then what do I want to play? I might play something weird. I might play. Uh, I can do Brew Year, guys. Or Oscar Mike. Bad Man Go Bye Bye. <laughs> um. You know, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna do that airborne deck I showed you before, just because I think being able to support people with jets will be fun. It'll be more interesting to see what the other guys do. Um, I'm assuming that's you, Bushfrog. The Iowa, <laughs> Iowa, 101. Um, question about um eras, real quick, for involving decks. Yeah. So, you know, there's the all before. 85 and before 80s um is there anything after 85 uh if i was to have all on or is 85 the max irregardless no no there's this stuff if you go all there's like 1990s stuff okay yeah it's just so for some reason sure. to set it within the cold war i think they just have it as 85 and 80 as the thresholds okay oh please change starting points uh i think maximum is 4000 for this map uh, we'll do high income though, just to make it like a bit more less awful. Uh, everyone's ready. Let's do it. If you're just joining the stream, by the way, welcome. Um, we're doing a bit of a tutorial stream today about how to play Wargame Red Dragon from a noob perspective. Um, uh, we've already covered like deep building, some tutorial games. Um, and now we're playing a game, like a multiplayer game, with a 3v3 versus AI. Uh, all the human players are on the same team. We've got uh, Iowa 101, uh, Area, and myself. Um, and we're fighting some dickheads uh, in Redfall. 
You have no boats. Okay, that's fine. I've got navy. Like a little bit of navy, so that's probably fine. So here we go. I haven't placed anything. I've got these two. As you can see here, this is a multiplayer game. So you have anything that's your friend's uh, yellow. Uh, yellow. Fucking hell. Uh, green. As, as like, uh, friendlies. Um, that isn't your units. Like, uh, allied. So if you hover over them, you'll get names too. So like this Nana, uh, Nana San Shiki CV is uh, Ariats. Uh, Chugata Cargo and the FOB. Whereas um, Iowa's units are the, over here. So if you hover over them, you can tell whose units are whose. Um, obviously, voice chat is pretty handy for playing war game, but you can obviously use the ping system. Um, and there's also text chat down the bottom left here if you want to talk to just your allies and be like really helpful technically. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to. Iowa. You seem to have taken the left flank and area at the right. So I, I might go the, down the middle, but starting in Bravo, if that works for you guys. And I'll mainly support rather than um, front line, just to kind of give an example of like your guys' play style. Uh, but I will have some anti-air and stuff around. I'm just going to make like a little anti-air team there. Some recon. Uh... The airborne decks, everything's a bit weird, and I'm pretty rusty to be honest. Uh, I have a tank over here just to ruin anyone's day who tries to come in my area too quickly. Um, and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my money on jets to be honest. I'm gonna anti Tunguska, anti tank. Uh, some air superiority would be good. I'm going to have two of those. And then I'm going to save the rest of my money for later. And I need a ship at some point to take that zone. I've got a hundred there. I'll save the rest of my money and buy a free mantle when I can afford it. Hey, by the way. Uh, oh, hello, killer. Uh, bad Batch in uh, Golden Throne. Oh, sick. Okay. Got hey. it. So as you can see, comparatively, I have fuck all down, whereas um, Ariat has, I think he's an armored deck, um, and he has an absolute ungodly amount of armor on this road, ready to push up, um, and then on the left side here, we've got um, Iowa's units, a little bit more reserved, but um, definitely still a formidable force, you've got gun tanks at the back here, um, and you've got, well not gun tanks, the real unit, but the, you know, spags. Um, Challenger Marksman's, you've got some infantry and Warrior Milan's, which is like an APC. Uh, you've got like Aslev's with uh, anti air units, I believe. Um, and then you've got his commander and a Jeep back here and a Bob. And then at the back here, you've got another commander and a Helo and a Recon Helo. So nice, 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 nice. Um, I'm basically going to lay down the hay with the air at a certain point. Um, where are the things? Attack, defense, low. Defense. Cool. Uh, Bushrog, are you ready? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you're ready. I'm just gonna go launch. <laughs> Be a little bit laggy at first um, in multiplayer games. Uh, you'll get warnings like that. Um, just ignore them unless they hard crash. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, you think? Oops, though. There we go. Got enough now to buy that free mental, so I'm just gonna move that up there to capture Alpha. Uh, and then I've got some jets, and I'm gonna send out this seed aircraft immediately uh, to basically try and engage their radar anti air if there's any. But I'm probably gonna pull him out pretty quick because I don't wanna fly him over 
unrecon zones too much. Yeah, let's pull back. Waiting for something to just... Yeah, there we go. Anti-air immediately. <laughs> but he's out. So that's fine. So yeah, I've got some recon uh, flying over this bridge area here, because there's definitely going to be stuff coming over these bridges. Uh, a lot of armor, a lot of enemy armor, stuff like that. Set a new observation post there. Here comes their commander. I'm going to try and cap him. Got him. I'm gonna use my uh, I'm gonna use my Nighthawk on as a, as a stealth bomber. I think it's pretty effective against not getting shot down by anti air. So I'm gonna use this to engage those trailers. I'm an run. Hopefully, you can bomb them without dying, but I'm also not sure. He's dead. Hell yeah. Slombo's having a field day. Uh, we've captured Alpha as well. I'm probably just going to reinforce that a bit once I can afford it. Uh, I'll get a Donghae in now. Um, I like Donghae's, they're really good anti-air, so I quite like using them as support for my navy. Um, obviously we've got the boys, been doing pretty good. Uh, I'm going to get my commander into Hotel next, I think. So basically, um, Ariat has the uh, Charlie, front of Charlie, secured pretty thoroughly with all his fucking armor. Um, and then I'm pretty sure um, Iowa over here on the western flank in India um, has got a pretty good handle on things. But it's probably taking a lot of the, the flak. Like a lot of their main force is coming in there. So I'm just going to send this out to try and help with any anti air. I bet there's a fucking Tungusker or three, maybe? Uh, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to send this over here to capture this zone, and I'm going to send in some tanks as well. When I can afford it. You know what, actually infantry might be better. Let's go... Let's go Delta Force into Hotel. And... Just reinforce the backline a bit. Um, I'm a serial turtler in real-time strategy games. I always seem to like, just like to build up and defend rather than push aggressively, which sometimes is my downfall. But um, I really like just having a strong defense. I'm gonna try and cap their little dickhead over there, my Lombo. So I can get him without getting shot down myself. That is their commander out of Delta, which would mean just more hilarious. Oh, they can see me there. Okay, I'm gonna pull out of there before I lose my longbow. And he probably needs supply as well, so he's gonna go over here and then. So far, so good though. We've got hotel, we've got golf, we've got India. Um, probably need some support in terms of the. Uh... A little bit more anti air there. Probably a little bit more tank action as well. Let's uh, go here. Uh, these Delta Force guys have got it in there. Just put them right in the middle of town. So they've got a little bit of a blade of um, zone around them. That was an accident, so I'm just gonna cancel that. <sighs> what have we got? What have we got? A lot of EMI 25s, so this is definitely a job anti here, and it's going to be a lot of shit coming in there too. So. Let's 
Let's get their Cobra in with eyes on, so the Nighthawk can bomb the fuck out of them. Yeah, I probably don't need some help on the left. Oh, honestly. Oh, yeah. There goes the Cobra. for one. Take the aircrafts back up, so I'm gonna go after the Tunguskas. Avenger arc is almost out of rockets. Oh, is out of rockets. And replace them with this one. We're still taking a lot of pets from and tanks, so I'm bringing a Thunderbolt. evac him before he gets shot down by something like really annoying the commander's out there too so I'm gonna try and hunt him down or hunt that down oh I'm so sorry I, uh, I think I just killed your scorpions yeah so I'm guessing it's friendly fire then yeah Ah, okay. I just dropped the giant GBU on um, his uh, light tank spy accident, trying to kill an enemy heavy tank. Cool. Oh, we've just spotted all their fobs in their base, though. Uh, area has moved all the way up into their main base, and there's like four fobs in there. He's just gone hard on the armor. And as you can see, it's a bit of a fucking war zone up there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, Awa. I did not. I, I saw them way too late. I was going to cancel the mission, but he had already dropped the bombs. I was not paying enough attention. We got no AI. Okay, well, in that case, I will impunity them. Uh, what's my best bombs? Maybe 340 kilos. Cluster. Let's drop one of these on there. Bobs. Drop it on that one. Oh, I see a Tunguska. That is definitely a evac. Wait for the seed aircraft to come in. Uh, helos might be a good choice, though. Let's go two heavy hogs over here just to support that area a bit. Uh, I'm waiting for the Raven to come back in so I can just ruin their day. So the raven is so nice, it just it just hunts these fucking radar into here really well. Yeah, they definitely still have non radar anti air in here though. Unfortunately, and this raven may die. Cause I thought I clicked eBay, but he didn't. Might have got away. Holy shit. He actually made it out. 
I'm shocked by that. So now I need to clear them out of their... Oh, nice. Area has cleared them out of their corridor, so they have no corridors in Juliet now. Um, do I have Straubs? Damn it, I don't have Straubs in this deck. I love Straubs. That would have been good for the river. Oh, oh this trailer might kill these helicopters. Will there be much of a chance to do anything? Yep. Damn it. That's my Lombard doing. It's doing pretty good. And let's move up our anti-air screen to like here. And like here. Just a bomb there kind of indiscriminately. Something, not much, but something. <laughs> and now we can see basically, um, area has pushed all the way up the right flank and it's clearing out Juliet. Now it's actually captured Juliet, so we can actually bring in units from this side of the map now, which is incredibly useful. And then we've got um, Iowa pushing up the left flank pretty severely as well. So we've wrapped up their commander in India. Um, they still have some pretty nasty tanks around the Foxtrot MD. And then we just need to push up their mid line into Echo and Keela. Said I'd take the mid, but uh, I'm finding myself quite enjoying just being like a bit of support here and there where I'm needed. Uh, definitely need more recon though, so I'm bringing this Lombard in. Get eyes on. Um, Bring in the Raven for a bit more. Flanking with this Apache. Bring in the Raven basically just to make sure there's no Tunguskas in the area. Because God, I hate Tunguskas. I don't know if I was clear about that already. But they are the worst. <laughs> Let's bring the Thunderbolt in for those Buratinos. Because fuck Buratinos. Uh, can I afford another one? Not yet. Almost. 140. And Thunderbolt 2. Where do you need us, sir? Well, technically Thunderbolt 2 too. <laughs> No, no, you're good. You're good, Elliot. Sorry, Elliot. Um, yes, sir. You are doing fine. Uh, the honestly, like, it doesn't matter if it's a quick game. It's more just like to get an idea of what playing with other people's like. Where do you need us, sir? Um, I would highly recommend voice chat normally, though, for people. <laughs> Uh, this longbow is all out of missiles, but I'm going to send him in anyway, because we need the recon. Uh, the other Apache is almost out of missiles as well, but he's doing good. Nighthawk can come in and just bomb the shit out of this area. Uh, they don't have much left, to be honest, though, in this area. I'm just going to bomb this city a little bit. With another Aardvark. 
two hard bikes and fuck it, this this as well. The night hall. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. I, I really hope those bombs don't get your stuff. No, preliminary bombardment. We're good. We're good. We'll get you. See you later, T55. And I'd say that's basically them almost dead. We're just down to like their last few holdouts over here. Um, and I'd say it's basically all dead, most of it. I'll send these in for the healers. I'm gonna send the Raven in just to clear out any more time Guskers in case there's any in there, which I don't think there is. Helos are down basically. T-55s are about to be down. <laughs> they are having a bad time on that last little MSR into the zone. We have endless air superiority. Yeah, I hate the Halos too. And I would say... That's game. Hell yeah. 17 minute game. Good job, guys. So yeah. Uh, as you can see there. Um, basically. I think Iowa took the brunt of their assault in the west there. Um, so that's kind of reflected in the points a little bit. Um, I wouldn't read these too much. Iowa also did have the most command points. So theoretically, you know, gave us a lot of our economy. You know, where we could bring in a bunch of units. Um, meanwhile, uh, Ariat and I were pretty much unchallenged in our, I mean, I didn't march as much as Ariat did, like, Ariat had fucking tanks on the ground in spades, but, um, yeah, interesting game. Um, meanwhile, they, they just suffered. They did not take enough zones, uh, they, three human players versus three easy AI is, like, pretty, you know, you will fuck them up pretty easily if you've got semi-competent people on your team. Uh, in terms of my kills, my longbow, as I said, was pretty effective little helicopters. That's reflected there. Tarnoff, the absolute legend, killed two commanders and a bunch of other shit. Um, my Nighthawk killed a bunch of tanks. The Raven killed four ton Guskers, so that's, you know, that's his main job, so I'm proud of him. Um, yeah. That M8 AGS is kind of a standout, like... They normally, I find them normally trash. And weirdly, he just killed like six Australia units. He must have just found like a pocket of them. I wasn't paying attention to that, so. Uh, any other standouts? Nothing really. Pretty standard. Um, kind of what you expect. You know, Cobra shot down by Tunguska. Weak tank killed by good tank. Helicopters killed by anti air. Humvees killed by slightly better APC. Uh, one of my, ra my Raven fund got shot down by Australia. Um,. Yeah. Again, as you'd expect, the fucking Lombo got a level up. Um, and my two command Hueys are what got all my command points for me. So, yeah, not not a surprising game by any means. And hope that gives you a rough idea of, like, how you kind of play and what the actual flow of battle's like in this game. And that's probably where I'll leave it, to be honest. Um, A, I need a break. My throat hurts. I've been talking for far too long. Um, and B, <laughs> it's late um for uh my north american friends uh so i think that's probably enough of a baseline tutorial um if you have any further questions feel free to uh message me on youtube under dozette d-o-z-e-t-t-e -T -T -E. you can see it down here in the bottom left of the war game menu um or dozette waifu on twitch if you're watching now you obviously know where i am <laughs> Uh, so feel free to send me a message or uh, head up the next stream and be like, hey, you've seen the Wargame tutorial verse, but it's actually this. You know, like, I'm not an expert by any means. So feel free to contact me with tips or um, if you want to play a game um, or if you, you know, this was helpful in any way, I'd like to know. Um, so, yeah. 
hope you enjoyed if you're not already following i appreciate it I'm trying to get to affiliate um and yeah farewell i'll put this up on youtube as well um in full so if you if you want to reassess the deck building section or you missed parts of it um feel free to watch but obviously at this point it's like a what almost a three hour stream now so it's a, it's a big video so i appreciate it if it's not everyone's cup of tea all right that's enough waffling from me bye that was a long stream <laughs> oh, i haven't actually ended it yet i haven't clicked the button sorry oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm stupid Wait. i'll say goodbye again bye <laughs>